Hey, morning everybody. Good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to my personal favorite live stream of the year. I'm really glad you guys are here. Thanks for joining. If you can hear me in the chat, in the live chat, give me a little thumbs up. Hopefully we're all good to go. Um, but yes, we are here today to celebrate not only the top five winners, but their incredible workflows, tips, tools, techniques, all the stuff that they can offer. They're going to walk us through these incredible breakdowns, guys. Um, we're going to hit every single winner. Each winner goes up for 30 minutes. And I'm just going to ask them about their workflow. They've prepared um, presentations for this um, over the last couple weeks. So yes. All right. We're good in chat then. We're good in chat. Thank you. Good to see you guys. Thank you for joining us. Um, it's a good time. Thanks for being here on a Friday. Um, so yeah, I mean, regardless of your guys' program of choice, regardless of what programs you use, um, this live stream really, every time we do these, I personally walk away with having learned so much. I walk away feeling super inspired uh, after talking to all five of these artists. And what's really cool about this is that each one of these artists, yes, they were given the same template file. As you all know, you guys probably participated yourself, but they all tackle similar problems in a different, unique way. Yes, there's overlap, but I find it very, very cool that each artist has a different approach to this. And that's what is so um, revealing to me. I know my workflow, I'm kind of set in my ways. I know that this works and that works and I'm trying to learn this or that. But when these artists talk about their process, Constantly, I'm like, wow, I never thought of that. And I hope you guys have the same reaction, the same thoughts and walk away from this live stream um, learning as much as myself. So we got a lot of awesome art to cover. We got a lot of, lot of awesome tips, techniques, workflows. If you guys have any questions for the artists, um, we're going to be moving pretty quick. Each artist has about 30 minutes. But if you guys have any questions for them, um, please drop them in chat. Uh, we have a couple moderators. We got Ronan. We got Ronan in chat. Um, Freaking awesome. Good to see you, Ronan. Good to see you, man. And uh, we'll try and get your guys' questions to the artists. I will also hang out with you guys after all five artists are uh, interviewed and have shared their breakdowns. I'll hang out with you guys for, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes at the end just to kind of unwind and uh, and say what's up. So we're gonna be moving though, we're gonna be moving. We got five artists each for 30 minutes. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys are excited. Grab a drink while you can. Um, it's freaking great. I got nothing else to say. It's gonna be a good time. So before we talk to Robin, our fifth place winner for the Eternal Ascent Challenge, I'm gonna throw it to the sponsor really quick. Um, got a little announcement for you guys and then we're gonna get right into it. So I'll see you guys in like a minute and a half. Catch y'all soon. All right, so with the completion of our very own Eternal Ascent 3D Community Challenge, I know some of y'all are still looking to put your skills to the test before our next big August 3D Challenge. So I am happy to announce that I've been selected as a judge in the official Honkai Star Rail 3D Art Competition where they're challenging 3D artists to create art around the theme of dive into dreams. For those of you who don't know, Honkai Star Rail is a free-to-play turn-based RPG set in a sprawling open-world sci-fi landscape. And they've added a new planet called Penaconi with a city built on dreams at its center, hence the challenge theme. Now their contest kicks off on April 3rd, and the point here is to create a five second animation that contrasts the moment before and after your main subject drifts off into sleepy land. It's gonna be a fun way to dive into a new art style perhaps, maybe meet a new community, and of course win some big cash prizes. And after the challenge wraps out on May 8th, I'll be live streaming all the top art on June 17th. So click that link down below to get started, get more information, get inspired, and dive into dreams. Robin, what's up, dude? Can you hear me? That's the first question. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clearly. Okay, Hi. amazing. <laughs> We're good. We're already off to a good start. Um, chat, if you guys can hear Robin, let's get a thumbs up. But man, congratulations. It's so good to see you up here. Um, it, you, you've come a long way and uh, 
it's freaking great to have you up here. Thanks for, for making time for this. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. So, man, um, what, what was this journey like for you? Um, is this your first challenge, your second challenge? Uh, uh, actually, it's my first. I always <laughs> wanted to participate, but yes. didn't find like the according time. But yeah, it was a blast. <laughs> Awesome, man. Wow. Way to knock out your first challenge. It's crazy. How long have you been doing 3D for? Um, I think I started out when I was about 16 or something. So that makes almost 14 years. Sweet. But I started out with uh, 3D Smacks and then switched over to Blender. I think about back when COVID started, I think three to four years. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Amazing. Shoot. That's great. Yeah, 3DS Max was actually my first well, no, technically it was C4D, but 3DS Max was like the one for like six, uh, six years about. Yeah, funny thing, I think I started because of, uh, with 3DS Max because of you guys, uh, because of like Brandon, you, yep. Sam and Nico, all the guys. Yep, same, yeah. same. <laughs> they had all the answers. That's why I switched is because they had all the answers that like I was, yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, there's no C4D tutorials. There's all these 3DS Max tutorials and like, you know, my friends are using 3ds Max, so they can answer all my questions. So yeah, I switched. Um, but that's cool, man. Really, really great work. So what? We're gonna get into the breakdown. We have a lot of cool stuff to get into. You've prepped some cool stuff. But I want to ask you first, like, what was your inspiration to make this piece? Was this your first idea, or did you switch ideas halfway through, like me? Or how was this process <laughs> for you? Um, I think it was. It was taking about two days to get the idea, but I started just uh, just sitting down and just brainstorming and putting everything out like, which came to my head. And, but I ended up with this idea because I think um, my girlfriend told me about a practice where there are some uh, dirty rooms which you just clean with a toothbrush. And it's not about like the goal to get a clean room, but it's more like a form of meditation where you just enjoy the process. It's like a Sisyphus, but he enjoys it himself, kind of wipe to it. And yeah, that really much inspired me to do this thing here. And it, yeah. yeah, it really shows too, because one thing that we were thinking of when we when we saw this art and we were like going between, oh, you know, top 20, top 10, top five, this one out of all of them, I think really spoke the theme of the challenge which was eternal ascent because the the great wall goes on forever and ever right um <laughs> yeah so it truly is eternal it goes off into the background like infinitely and they're just you know sweeping peacefully it's such a peaceful scene i think you really captured that so man hats yeah, off to thank you, you. <laughs> way way to knock it out on your first challenge it's crazy thanks for that yeah man absolutely all right so you have, um, we got 30 minutes with you. So you got a bunch of stuff that you've prepped. Um, I have a lot of questions. And the first thing that I ask besides how you came up with this idea is where do you start? What, once you got the idea, where do you go from there? Um, after the idea was settled, I think I started out with a pure ref board. Yeah. One here. And I think it just started out with like, after having like the log line for it, I just prompted it with mid journey. Mm -hmm. And I think I just had some variations of a monk with a broom, cleaning the great wall of China, cherry blossom petals, cinematic, golden hour, 60 millimeter film, aspect ratio nine by 60 because of the challenge. And also like the version six of mid journey. Mm. And just did a sum of variations of it and came up with this prompts and that was the result I got. Oh, amazing. And yeah, I think that was just for inspiration on how to proceed with it. And also it gave me some uh, great palettes for what mood I'm going to uh, go for. Awesome. Uh, so this yeah. was a huge inspiration, but I wasn't sure at this point if I should go for a mood like something like this or more like an overcast view of it. But I wanted to stay with the Great Wall and the pinkish uh, Sakura tree petals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you, at also... this point, um, just to clarify, so you use Mid Journey to uh, ideate, 
right? You knew the idea in your head. Um, it spits you out these the content and character, right? So you got that. You like the angle, kind of like the approach. And then to the right, you said you have the mood. So you have a couple different, um, I, I'd say maybe uh, lighting setups, perhaps, or yeah, feelings yeah. that you are thinking about portraying. You don't know which direction you're going to go yet, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I have some questions there. But you were going to say one other thing. You were going over the great wall pictures, right? Yeah, they were basically just some um, live action references just to see how the wall behaves into the distance, like with the sfumato, with the depth fog and all that stuff. Got it. But yeah, it's just some live action reference to have it also on the side. So what what do you do then when you have a couple different approaches to an idea? Um, you know, 3D can, can take a long time to yeah. <laughs> find out if the idea you have would work you know for me it took me it took me two weeks to realize that i had to switch ideas halfway through so how do you approach here with the fork in the road right you're splitting the road between a couple different moods um how do you decide which road to go down uh it was a bit of a try and error thing <laughs> i i mean maybe you can see it here uh the, those are just some work in progress stills, but I jumped to like from one light setup to another and was, it's not like the usual way you do it with like blocking, starting out with blocking the scene and getting your uh, lighting set up. Uh, it was just uh, while editing the whole piece, uh, I just started out trying out stuff uh, within the range I had here. <laughs> and midway through, I wasn't sure if I should proceed with the, the whole idea. I think the same way you did. So why, but, what, what was it that, that made you think that way? Um, it just wasn't really convinced with the, the look I had. I think it was around here. I wasn't sure if, if the, if the lighting set out makes sense or to uh, convey the idea and to highlight the, the wall to see that it goes into infinity and also have the right mood for the scene. It was just, um, yeah, I just I wasn't sure where, where it's going. And I just continued and tried out stuff until I reached that point here where I was happy with the lighting itself. Okay, can we, um, can we go to the first render you have um, in full screen? Oops. You know about spacebar, yeah? Spacebar trick? Turn. The spacebar trick in PRF? Uh, if you hit ah, spacebar to like snap full. Ah, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So okay. that's funny, man. That's a lot of people's submission right there. A lot of artists. Yeah. That's like <laughs> done. Boom. Right? And that's okay. That's as far as they could have gotten. Um, you know, as we as we grow, of course, we get to the next level, the next level. So this is your first one. Kind of got a block out. Let's see your second. Getting the pink in there. Nice. Okay. Working a little bit of the foreground, the castle. Are you like hand modeling this stuff in Blender? Um, some assets are quick selected. Some, some stuff is hand modeled. Uh, some stuff is, yeah, I think something from everything Mixed. a bit. <laughs> yeah. I got you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, third image is getting that nice warm tone that you actually have in your final. Um, that's cool. I think so, here it started to go into that direction, but then I backpedaled a bit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Next one. Okay. Yeah. Still working with colors. Still working with yeah. colors. Yes. Um, the lighting takes a dramatic shift right here. Yeah, it does. Nice. Okay. So it's kind of like a golden hour type of setup. And then finally, yes, okay. You're then feeling good then about I think it. here, yeah, that was the point where I said, okay, this is going to the right direction. From this on, I can start uh, putting in some more stuff and just having a good feel for the lighting. Yes, okay, so you have, uh, everyone had 30 days to do this challenge, but no one probably worked all 30 days. Um, how many days did you really have, you think? Um, Kind of hard to say because I'm working working full time. I have like I don't know, maybe sixty to eighty hours in 
something like that. Maybe more, maybe less. Okay. Yeah. There was a lot, a lot of weekends and also after work, just getting one or two hours working on it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Nice. All right. Um, and by this point, when you have your lighting kind of figured out, you feel that the direction you're going in is a solid one. You're no longer wondering if the idea is going to work. You know it's going to work and you just need to polish, polish, polish. How much, how far into the challenge are you at this point here? Uh, I think it was uh, five days before. Five days before? Submission. This was five days before the submission? Yeah. <laughs> I think I spent the last five days as much time as I spent the 25 days before. Also, I wow. uh, skipped work for it. <laughs> Shouldn't say that, but yeah. Wow. All right. All right. Um, give us a little view into where we're going. All right. We see we got a couple more clips here. Yes. Yeah. Here, I think the grading process started just some iteration of going back and forth between Blender, Nuke, and. Uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, resolve. Yeah. Amazing. I love it. Grading is very important. Y'all don't miss that step. Oh, but you changed the lighting. You actually changed the lighting direction. Coming from the left um, and no longer from the front. Yeah, from this In to this. this one. Uh, yeah, yeah. There yeah. was the change. Yeah. Awesome. Good stuff. Cool. I like the highlight which you got here, but I think it was more important to um, curve. Make yeah. this to curve. Yeah. To make so that you see the actual shape of it. So yeah. See the curvature. And that was smart, smart. All right, all right. Um, and then you got your final, which we saw. Yeah, that was the final piece. Beautiful. All right, what's next, man? So you um, that's kind of the overall kind of uh, approach for the entire project. What about yeah. like the nitty gritty? What what stuff was uh, was tough for you during this? What what was the uh, the roadblocks for you? <laughs> A lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> um well i didn't use like marvelous designer before i didn't use uh so the cloth simulation tool and i also didn't use like the 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 retargeting tool from rococo yeah also didn't use the geoscatter plugin which was used for the all the foliage in the scene okay. uh yeah i think that's it Dang. All right. That's a lot. Yeah. Like, so Marvelous Designer is a program that I have always wanted to learn. And I think this year is probably the year to uh, do it. Um, yeah, it's great, man. It's great. That's crazy that uh, that you've never used it before. And for this, you, you pulled it off. That's that's nice. <laughs> Thanks. All right. What are we yeah, looking we at? What's going on? Um. This is just um, here. I have also some uh, animated content. I think it was like after having the reference board and the idea, that was like the first sort of blocking I got. Like just having the idea of the wall going into the distance and you can't see the end of it, just roughly blocked out here. And also already having the some sort of room in the scene, I guess. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Start off with the yeah. room. It's important. Sweet. But at this point, I thought, yeah, maybe. Oh, sorry, just let me get this. Okay, it's not working. Then I have to shift manually. And after that, I already uh, started out with the character. Okay. And retargeted it and deleted the motion capture from the torso and animated the uh, broom sweeping by hand. Oh, wow. And after that, I took it and put it into Marvelous Design and did the whole uh, cloth animation simulation. Yeah. All right, so you're kind of, you're, you're loosely blocking out the environment, but you're really really focusing on the character. Why? Why do you start with the character? I don't know, man. <laughs> I wouldn't do it this way again. It was just like, okay, I know I'm having a monk at the end of like, um, from the reference boards, uh, uh, going for this look. And this was like already locked, so I said, okay, I just start with the thing. I already know which how it will look like at the end. So I just felt safe at this point. Okay. Yeah, it was maybe a bit of procrastinating uh until the five days before submission. See, <laughs> but we, yeah, that's it's funny. We opposite it. procrastinate because I'm like, I love the environment so much. 
the characters I, I had like, ah, it's such a question <laughs> mark for me, but it's good. I mean, you you knew what the character was, so you dove into that first. That's a smart, yeah, smart go. approach. Cool, cool. Okay. And then uh, there were some uh, more iterations of the terrain and the Great Wall. I wasn't really happy with how the line goes into the distance. So mm -hmm. I iterated multiple times. I mean, here it's a different shape than we have here. I just tightened the terrain here a little bit to this version. Then I just tested out how the foliage will behave. Uh, just mm -hmm. to get a feel for Geoscatter. And then just to get a feel how the pinkish uh, trees and sakura trees will look like. Cool. Cool. Ah, now it works. Okay. Then also putting into to resolve. It was a lot of back and forth between the three softwares just to see where to adjust the colors. If I have to do it in Blender, like right on the to the texture or um, in compositing or later on in resolve itself. Yeah, that was that was quite a process. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's tough. You know, like for me personally, when I'm working on something and it takes a long time for it to look good. It's tricky without having gone through that process a bunch to know that it's gonna look good on the other side. You just have to keep tweaking and messing with it and messing with it. Like, did you have trouble with that in your mind or or was it a thing? Quite that, a lot. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's like holding onto a really, really thin piece of rope <laughs> until the process is through. At least that's how I feel. That's great. So I think the thing that sets you apart is that you actually push through that gap of unknown and you, and you get yeah. to the end. Um, that's good. That's really good. I think that, that that might be one of the most important things, um, to be honest. Yeah, I think so too. All right. So the terrain, you said, um, I don't know if you mentioned, are you doing the terrain in like a another program or is it a plugin for blender uh i started out with world creator world creator yeah yeah and put in some meshes and blocked it out again i think back here it was some self-made uh work creator um i think uh, 8k uh, displacement maps uh, whatsoever uh, but later on, I decided to use some pre-built uh, terrains from, I don't remember the reseller, but yeah, I just took them and uh, scattered them around the scene because I thought it was just quicker and I was already way too late for doing it then by hand. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I think you yeah. probably have more control when you can move the pieces around a little bit versus just one giant, you know, you can rotate yeah, it. Exactly. That's about it. But um, All right. All right. So let's keep going. Yeah. Where are we at here? We got... You're testing with the pink and you're testing with the the flow of the wall. And what are you looking for in the flow of the wall? What makes one flow of the wall not good and the one you ended up on good? Um, I'm still not sure if it was the best decision, but I just wanted like that you start out with the point of interest that you follow the line into the distance with your eyes. That's also why I ended up having like this really vibrant yellowish point for the monk. That you start with the eyes there and then you have like the two. Maybe I just cut to the end. It's easier. Somewhere around here. So that you follow with the eyes. Um, start out here on the monk. And then you just follow the line of the great wall. So that's why we are having here a blue point of interest again. And then the second one here. So that you follow with your eyes and you can see the actual shape how it's uh, forming into the distance so it's really clear into the first few frames where you have to look with your eyes so That's that was nice. the idea of it and i also wanted to have like the, the first frame of the animation looks the best i guess just to yeah have like a nice picture and because i think later on it falls a bit apart but i really like the first frame later on yeah yeah, Just that's actually a very interesting point because, uh, yeah, you don't want to, you don't want your first frame to look like garbage, and then it's like, <laughs> oh, you just got, just wait, you know, it's like you got to get through seasons one and two, and then season three gets good. Like you got, yeah, exactly. you got to get 
the first frame looking nice is a really great approach. Um, really, really solid approach. And uh, hopefully, you know, it looks good all the way throughout. I don't think it falls <laughs> apart uh, at the end, but you know, hey, you're the artist, so like you have a different eye for it um, than, than any of us do. Um, okay. All right. All right. What other challenges here? So you, you're, you're just working with the flow of the Great Wall. Um, you know, you're working with the lighting, pushing through all, all those days. You had five days left to finish it, um, uh, you know, until you actually got to a point where you liked it. What are some other hurdles and, and roadblocks that you faced during this challenge? Um, scene optimization was a big, big, big part of it mm. because it, was the first time using GeoScatter and my scene was way too huge to render anywhere. And it was already, I think, two days before submission. So I had time to do like two renders. And the first one was, uh, yeah, it didn't work <laughs> because I forgot to hide some stuff. <laughs> oh, and does, um, does Blender give you the ability to like spot render something? Can you render region? Um, yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay. But it was like, uh, I think I missed, I missed the, one of the pedal layers was not hidden and the other one was, and there was like just some squares floating around, which I could have also like, uh, retouched, but yeah, would have been quite a lot of work to do yeah. that. So I just had to re-render it again. And then it was already one and a half days before submission. So yeah, time schedule was a big, big, big problem. Yep. That is the, <laughs> that is a huge thing for all of us. Very difficult to deal with is the time schedule. Um, you think, we think we have more time than we actually have. Um, it's tricky, very, very tricky. Uh, how did how did you manage that? How did you manage the time? Um, did you <laughs> again? I'll let you say. I'll let you say it. But uh, yeah, how did you manage the time? Well, I just thought if it works, good. If it doesn't, then it is who <laughs> it is. And yeah, yeah. Since it was also my first time participating, I just thought, okay, maybe maybe it's just a nice experience, and maybe next time it will work better. Yeah. But yeah, I managed to submit and apparently you guys liked it. So absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so is there anything else that you prepared that you want to share? Like I, I saw that you had some other clips, right? You had some mats and whatnot. Um, um, yeah, I think one thing which sets me maybe a little bit apart is that I did a lot of things also in compositing and not in After Effects. I did most of it in Nuke. Okay. And I think some techniques are more like the visual effects approach to it, mm -hmm. because what you can see here, um, I didn't really spend that much time texturing the wall because I thought, yeah, I just have like a repetitive pattern and that's it. I just gonna reproject the texture later on in compositing. Um, that's what I did. Just a sec. I think it's, sorry. Yeah, it should be here. Yeah, basically, I don't know if you can see it through the stream. Maybe I have to get it a bit bigger. You can see here that it's a repetitive pattern. Yeah. And I just reprojected the whole thing, like painting on a still and projected onto the geometry itself again. And Whoa. techniques like this one I did a lot, a lot of times. Like also later on, I painted on some uh, rim lights on the on the roof of this building here, uh, which you can see maybe. Yeah, I think here. Sorry. Yeah, stuff like that. Also have a nuke. Um, this is the whole note tree for the whole setup. Okay. So this is all like, and yeah, can, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I'm curious to see, to see what your layers are and like kind of what you're doing here at Nuke. Um, what we usually do is just render all the passes, um, which you can get out of Blender so that you have like, 
takes a bit of time. Oh, well. Oops, sorry. <laughs> so this way we have isolated like the diffuse channel, the indirect and direct, the diffuse color, the glossiness, direct, indirect, uh, glossiness, color, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And what we do a lot of time is just isolate like the, the diffuse color channel, which uh, looks like this. And then we just paint on and compositing everything we need. Paint and on? And also, How so? yeah. You're saying this is your base layer and then you paint on as you need it? Yeah. So what? this is like the wall. Uh -huh. Then we have like a reprojection of, I don't know, dirt and just rotopating painting some stuff like that, this. To... That's out of a render? That's from a render pass or that's literally? That's a render pass, yeah. Okay, yeah. And then later on, we just uh, bundle it back together. So before that, my diffuse color looks like this, which is straight out of Blender. Yeah. And after processing it, it looks... Uh, takes a bit time to process. So you're basically taking the unlit layer. Yeah. And you're making the unlit layer, um, I guess, bring, you're bringing the unlit layer to final. Yeah. Um, specifically here with this like texture reprojection and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. I, think, I think it's more of a visual effects approach than like a, uh, like a regular 3D artist because we also do the like when we have to track a shot and I don't know, paint on, I don't know, put a graffiti on a wall. It's sort of the same technique because we also have like the 3D geometry imported into Nuke. So maybe this is also interesting. So we have the whole wall in compositing here. This is still Nuke. Yeah, this is still Nuke. And then you can just paint on it and have it back in your scene because we also have like the camera imported and also the 3D geometry and just put it together at the end. What? And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's really nice to to composite in Nuke after doing a lot of After Effects. Uh, just some nice things like that. It's, it's awesome. So you don't have to track it. It's just you have the data here. Yeah, we, we have the 3D camera out of the scene exported and also the geometry and all that stuff. Dude, what the heck? That's and crazy. together with with all the crypto mats, you can also get like an alpha channel for every object in the scene you need by just picking it. Yeah. Which is really nice. And then combined, you can do basically everything you want in compositing as well. So I've always find it interesting to um, find the point where you switch over to compositing when you're editing in a, in a 3D scene. Um, yeah. Wow, that's 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 a whole nother level. Um, do you have a before and after of like your base render from Blender and then the final sure, composited? This is like the raw render out of Blender. Yeah. Is it big enough? And then the final. Uh, this is after compositing. That's after compositing, and then you bring it into DaVinci after this. Yeah. Okay, yeah, keep flipping like that. Wow. So you are messing with the colors. You were like bringing the blue out. Bringing yeah, this was also something which uh, came up in compositing itself. Wow. That's really important. Really, really important step. Um, it lifts everything kind of off the, I guess, the screen. Um, doing that color correction, those god rays. The texture thing you're doing there is insane. That's a crazy trick. <laughs> and then you're adding the petals, falling petals here as well. Oh, yeah. Um, there was like a base layer of petals. Yeah. Um, the one flying around. But also I rendered a second one just to put it on top of it. Because I, I thought it needed some more depth, some petals like really close to the camera just to have more depth in the scene. I think mm, that mm. helped a bit. 
Got you. Um, guys, in chat, can you drop me any questions that you have for Robin? Just hit me with at Punisher and I can see it quickly. We have like five more minutes. So uh, yeah, <laughs> drop your questions in chat. Um, but then yeah, keep going, Robin. I'm, I'm loving this. Um, yeah, just uh, also I rendered out some some mats for grading. Mm -hmm. I also let the fluff. Oh, sorry. Uh, try to hurry. Uh, Oh, sorry, I just jumped over there. No worries. Yeah, also met for all the roofs and the uh, pedals. Whoa. Some more pedals. Whoa. That's so cool. <laughs> this is like my favorite render of the whole. Yeah, that looks amazing. Add some glow, glow and also well. for skin tones too. Yeah. Just in for and also for foliage. Dude, that's so smart. Itself. That's so smart. So this is crypto mat. Is that that's what's allowing you to do that? Yeah, exactly. Okay, got you. Um, is it just a combination of like a bunch of selected crypto mats, basically? Yeah, just everything which made sense to me to combine to have them resolve isolated yeah. and adjust it even further. Oh, wow. Amazing. So, for example, here, adjusting the clothing mm -hmm. and the skin tones. Here we have whatever that is. Add the roofs even further. Then we have the wall isolated. That's great. Wow. And yeah, always just to bring it later on as close to as I could to get this to the Wes Anderson reference. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Um, one person was asking, when do you know that you're done with something? Uh, Anwar Tuha is asking, when do you know when is when it's good enough? Is is that the answer? When it gets to uh, the Grand Budapest Hotel? Is that... Uh... I, I think you could go even further if it's possible because I was just running out of time and I would love have I would have loved to spend a week more or something. What would because you have it done was like with a week more? Um yeah just a lot of uh I guess more detailed adjustments but also I didn't like how the roll off on the highlights was behaving because at the end I think over stream I could see that the highlights were a little clipped and stuff like that. And also I would have spent more time like um, into the construction stuff over here and the terrain itself because it was just throwing in stuff uh, as far as I could get it. And with the time I was left. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. it could have all uh, gotten a bit more <laughs> details and time. And, yeah. Amazing. I'm taking a look at the chat here. We got like one more minute. Let's see. Um, volumetrics. Uh, was that all nuke? Um, both blender. I think I had like a cube and also some fog cards with a gradient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also I put in some in compositing some the cloud layers just to give it some more structure and details so that it's not just a gradient to the distance yeah cool yeah oh, amazing awesome dude uh, it, it was an absolute joy to get the breakdown on this scene thank you so much for joining us yeah thank you so much yeah man that and was thanks amazing. for the challenges man yeah yeah come back for the next one um we'd love to have you later in august this year um and if you guys want to follow robin i got a link to uh whatever you put in the the submission link is down there so it's either your instagram or your youtube or your website or something it's down there um go check him out go check out his stuff check out his art and uh robin thank you so much for taking the time putting yeah, this together i so know much. it's a lot of work man it's a lot of work <laughs> thanks it's an honor thank you yeah all right man i'll catch you later peace man. all right bye later. peace <laughs> oh, oh, oh snap who's this who's this i recognize this man what up, Manuel? How you doing? Hi, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Um, so Manuel, you uh, unmute on Discord, perhaps. I don't hear you. Yeah, 
I think I'm fine now. There we go. Boom. What's up, dude? Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. Way to kill it Thanks. again, man. Um, absolutely, absolutely. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. A little, little uh, stressed because of much work that I have to do. But other than that, great. Yeah, for sure, man. Did you? Did you manage to catch a break after Eternal Ascent into oh. your next projects or no? Uh, not really. <laughs> Not really. Ah, shoot. It's still, still pushing, pushing through, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Shoot. All right. Uh, so if you do it for for a living, I guess it's it's good that it it's that way. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. So where are you from? For the people who don't know you, I'm from Germany. Uh, I'm 35 years old, and um, I, I think I have about 15 years experience as a 3D artist. Started in the early days of Blender. When it was a uh, nice gray software. <laughs> <laughs> Very yeah. nice. What got you in the 3D in the first place? Like, what was what was the impetus uh, for you? Basically, I, I I opened Blender and I was able to to model uh, things I could imagine. And uh, with half a year of experience, I had uh, nice renders and basically the possibility to to visualize everything that you have in your mind, depending on your skill level. But uh, that's what, what drove me to, to get into it. And then I studied for three years, uh, made a bachelor. And yeah, basically uh, there I, I learned Cinema 4D and After Effects and all the Adobe Pipeline stuff. Yeah, but nowadays it's just the Blender, Embergen and DaVinci mostly. Yeah, it's, it's crazy how powerful all this stuff is. Um, yeah, Unreal for me is like the this it's a, it's a blast you know it's free of course blender's free and like what you can do for free is just insane it's ridiculous yeah um, andrew is something i i want to dive into but i guess i would have to to spend a lot of time there so maybe in the future sometime yeah for sure for sure so on this project um like robin you know he learned marvelous designer for the first time um he learned mm -hmm. some other tools and techniques for the first time did you take on any big like learning moments during this where you're like i'm gonna learn marvelous or i'm gonna learn this or did you just kind of stick to what you knew uh, basically I, I with the last uh, uh challenge i won the the amber gen bundle and all the super nice jenga fx software bundle so uh i i dive into um, amber gen more and uh, for this project also i did a lot of volumetric stuff um mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that's, sweet. that's the, the big new thing, I guess. Um, maybe I, I start with my reference board um, and show you where, where I got from. Yeah, well, before before we get there, I do want to ask, and if it's a part of your reference board, then sure. But what gave you this idea? Like, this is such a crazy idea. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you would just think of one day when, you know, you wake up. Yeah. Uh, how did you come up with this? I think it's it's a nice thing to show with the reference board because yeah, I I gave myself uh, I guess uh, about three days in time to to think about the template, the camera movement, the general composition uh, in the frame, and I came up with uh, four different ideas. The first was a, a slightly dystopic, futuristic, uh, uh, polluted environment stuff like this, uh, and I found this nice references. Um, that was one idea. The other one was a more a deeper topic, uh, some kind of criticism of capitalism. Um, the mm -hmm. idea was a, a fat suited guy walking up the stairs with a briefcase in his hands and a dollar flying out of it and ignoring the poverty around him on the stairs. Mm. So homeless people and things like that, which would have been a, a nice story twist. Uh, but the problem there was that within the template, you only see the main character from his backside. And also uh, it's quite small in the template. So I thought it would be really, really hard to, to read the story when you see it the first time or just see it once. Mm. Um, so I, I dismissed that idea. Maybe I'll come back <laughs> someday to it. Um, the other one was uh, more of a, a, a deeper uh, topic as well as some some uh, city ruins uh, like in Syria bombed uh, in a war setting and 
a little boy or a little girl uh, pulling up his his teddy the stairs mm. and this also was one and the basically i was on on pinterest and and scrubbed through different uh, images and the nice thing there is that you also get new images if you click on one new yeah, uh, similar related. photos and you end up in, in a totally different image as you started but sometimes that's a creative process i do and uh, that way i came to that reference here these two pictures and that was the main inspiration uh, for the for, for my submission because i i i love the lighting of it i love the the general image composition the the vertical format because generally i i usually do more 16 to 9 formats and, and wide formats and not that vertical stuff so i thought maybe i'll give it a shot and try something like that um also i was a bit, a bit unsure whether it would uh, work within the template because the camera also moves and rotates quite fast yeah and therefore the environment would move uh, fast so at that spot, uh, uh, I jumped into the three D software the first time. Oh. You jumped into what? Say again. Into uh, the into Blender, into three D, and uh, started uh, a first block out. I see. To see if something like that could work. Oh. I see. I see. Maybe I can can show you. Um, here it is. It's basically just the template file. And I copied uh, some other characters and added the stairs and put it all in a, in a big box and added volumetrics. And I can show you the rendered view and also maybe in playback. And uh, oh, cool! it's basically just the template character, I duplicated a colored black. And after that, put it into a big, big box and uh, put a lot of volume metric stuff in it. And, and it's just a, a big, big area light lighting all the scene. And that's when I realized, okay, that could work within the template. The, the uh, background isn't moving that fast. So, so I could work with the set. And also, I think it's a nice look. You get the, this artistic painterly look with the denoising in viewport and blender. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I thought uh, it would work fine. And that's the point where I decided to, to go with uh, this idea. Amazing. So yeah. this is just short of week one. Is that is that right? That's basically day one. Uh, day one after I, I had uh, gathered all the four, four different uh, stories I would try to, to do. And uh, that's the first test on day one, basically. This is, this is the after... first test in 3D on day yeah. one, but it took you yeah. a, a couple or a few days to get Yeah, it, it was day four or five, I guess, yeah. within the whole process. We yeah. we loved, like when we were going through this, we loved it because um, it totally, and this is like after the fact we realized, but the, the values that you have here with the white on black and the black on white, it's like totally the yin and yang um, yeah. kind of setup. And it's just so easy for your eye yeah. to discern what like screen all right you're back oh now i see you oh. uh i think we're back okay cool all right we're back guys okay so this is day one your first test and you liked that the values were easy to read in the reference um yeah cool and basically after that, I decided to go full focus on that idea and started uh, basically blocking out the scene, um, starting to model the cliffs. I can maybe jump in another file. Uh, that's basically uh, Dang. how it looks uh, at the end. Um, it's mostly uh, from from Quixel Mega Scans, uh, just cliffs and stuff like that i'm i'm also really lazy and only optimize my scenes from the camera angle so you can see um basically the outsides are all missing and optimized and and just from the camera view um you can see everything that's perfect i mean that, um, <laughs> that's 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 how i did it as well <laughs> i was just like yeah. i don't care and uh, basically um I just uh, started adding some because I wanted some some 
ruins within the the cliffs and stuff like that i also had something like that in the reference board the uh, uh, ruins of petra Ooh, yes um wanted to incorporate something like that and that's within these cliffs here um also a lot of this stuff comes from from Quixel. um in the background i have some some medieval ruins um which were photo scanned uh, the, that were cc zero i found on sketchfab not really visible in the end but it it uh, all adds up to the to the overall mood i guess yeah and after that and um, basically the the world building the cliff itself uh, didn't take too much time because it was mostly mostly quixel maker scan assets so um the the most time consuming part was the the cloth sims in within blender maybe we can jump to that yeah yeah sure yeah. um I'll, I'll just note that uh it's it's really nice so i guess in unreal i'm used to um you don't really you can kind of skip, skip the block out because it's all just in real time and you're i'm using all the quixel stuff as well so mm -hmm. it's real easy to um to build your scene out um yeah in blender this might be a silly question but i assume it's the same right it's pretty easy to block out your stuff in blender you don't need a rendered view you just do viewport view and you can kind of get the idea right yeah yeah for sure and awesome. also it has a nice bridge to to make scans as well so you can import it and it has it, it's already shaded so that's really nice and yeah convenient. that's important yeah. did you did you manually place all those steps yeah that was uh, tedious because you have to to get the footsteps right that the characters aren't intersecting into the floor yeah and i had quite some characters in the foreground so it oh, was uh, yeah. tricky to put them all in the right height that no one is really visibly intersecting into the steps. Shoot. But yes. uh, it worked out. Basically, this is Eevee, the, the real-time uh, renderer. That way you can also do it in real-time, uh, like similar to, to Unreal, I guess. Yeah. When you, when you kit bash the things. So are all, yeah. like, the, the, the rock your mouse is on right now, uh, before, just a little bit, in the middle of the steps, right? In the middle of the steps. Yeah um are those individual pieces okay so that's a piece yeah, yeah click around that's oh that's a, a whole step okay cool yeah and these were steps from from mega scans i i think i saw them on some other projects as well um, dude it's so it smart like you just colored them black like because i think those are the green mossy ones is that right yeah yeah wow. could be wow yeah that's amazing that's perfect you just um, you're looking for shape you're not looking for the color yeah, and I, I knew that the light would be strongly directional from one side, so you wouldn't uh, uh, see any details on the front side for from the for the steps, for example. So I skipped that, and uh, that's a lot of time saving, I guess. Yes, yes, of course, of course. Ah. Um, the, the big part uh, was was cloth sim after that. That was done relatively quickly, I guess, in in one two days. Okay, yeah, let's take a look. I see, I see your questions in chat. I'll make sure to get there, okay, guys? Nox and um, uh, Lycos, I see you. So basically, um, I took the the template character and uh, downloaded a basic human character from Mixamo, retargeted it with the Rococo plugin, and after that, I, I offset it the animations that not everyone is moving at the exact same time, the same way. Yeah. Gave them slight offsets and slightly different timings, and after that, um, basically every one of these dudes get a, a gets a code. Um, it's really a, a, a really pretty, really simple base mesh, subdivided and parented to the to the armature. And after then, I, I gave everything 100 frames to settle basically before the animation of the character begins, that you don't see the start. That is so important. Y'all need to do that. Everyone needs to do that. That's <laughs> so important. Can you just say that one more time? Yeah. So basically, you need to, to pre-bake at least 20 or the more the better frames that your starting frame. Here, my starting frame is frame 101. Is seamlessly integrated and it looks natural that the cloth is flow flying in the wind because I also wanted a, a stormy windy scene. So basically, it's 100 frames extra baked cloth slim, and at frame 101, uh, the animation starts. Because otherwise, 
it would just look like your simulation started on frame one of your final render. Yes, and yes. It's, that obviously would break the whole thing. Okay. Um, so it's basically a, a, a resting pose and they're getting to the starting pose slowly so that the cloth uh, doesn't uh, jitter and intersect so yeah. much. Perfect. Yeah. And basically every one of these got his own own settings with slight variations and the slight turbulence settings other than than the other ones so yeah and when i was uh, happy with it uh, i finally exported it as it is a alembic file so that it is stored in the alembic and re-imported it to my master file that's another great technique um, too is like you made a new project file to tackle this part of yeah, the process it's in in this uh, uh, file it's only the cloth theme of the dark uh, guys with the dark cloth basically mm -hmm. and I, I i exported it um and the nice thing is with the alembic import you can retime the animation as well so that's a cool part and same uh, for the for the priestess the princess um the she the the only difference is that she has uh, more uh, layers of cloth she has basically a, a dress as a base also, there are the, the 100 frames before the animation for, for baking that the cloth sim uh, doesn't jitter here. And uh, at 101, it starts. And then uh, another cold uh, cloak. Um, basically, it's also just a generic female uh, model that I got from Mixamo and retargeted. Um, yeah. Amazing. Also, put it on the crown, which has a, a little bit of of um, that it interacts with the with the cloth. You can see it here. Um, Crazy. Yeah, and also some some little uh, um, um, jewelry and stuff like that. Some chains. Oh man. Which are basically basically also cloth sims, yeah. but uh, faked as as um, chains. Jewel basically. Jewelry sim. Yes, perfect. Basically, basically, you can see it looks like a, like a chain, but it's basically just a, a band of cloth that is uh, simulated. And after the simulation, I ran it through geometry nodes and generated the chain. So good. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Really so nice. So that's basically uh, the character part. Yeah. Okay, what about the guys up top? Um, can we show? Can you show uh, us final real quick? Go back to the final, yeah, yeah, and yeah. we just get a refresh. Sure. So you got that was also, sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, that was also tricky because the dissolving part. I, I had different uh, ideas in mind how the cloth could transform to the ravens flying away, and try to morph the the, the cloth directly into the shape of the raven, which didn't work out that great. So I basically faked it and. Uh, the, the dissolving cloth dissolves into feather particles and uh, reveals the bird with is, uh, which is under the cloth basically and scales up at, at the exact same uh, right time. Yeah. Um, I can show you in a, in a little bit in a file basically. Yeah, just a heads up. Um, we got 10 minutes. Um, okay. You're doing great. Okay. This is nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, basically, it's just uh, the cloth shader dissolves with a noise pattern while spawning these feather particles oh wow and and revealing uh, the revealing the bird that is underneath oh, it's it's just perfect. fake but it it works and uh, with volumetrics and and stuff like that it it blends in really nice i guess so you do an alpha fade with the noise uh yeah yeah for sure. it's, a, it's a it's a procedural musgrave noise uh, which dissolves the cloth and uh, spawns the particles and reveals the bird. Dude, how are you animating birds? Uh, it's it's really just uh, <laughs> simple as that. It's it's just a repeating what? pattern, and I and and after that, I I change the the speed of the pattern. And basically, when you when you uh, uh, get randomness in the in the path that the bird is flying, it looks quite natural, I think. So are you just, you're animating a bird like this and then do you put it on a spline? Do you have it follow a spline or what? Yeah, it, it basically follows a spline 
Um, and the, the bird also wiggles down, up and down on the spline a little bit. So it's a, basically, it's just a, a looping uh, and, and I have two different motions in, in Blender. I can switch, it's, it's an idle motion where the wings are, are spread mm -hmm. and not moving that much and, and the classical flapping of the wings. And I can switch between them and blend between them. And that way it's, it's looking, I guess, quite natural. How long does it take you to do these birds? Dude, that would have taken me a week. Uh, half a day, I guess, because I knew they were relatively small and uh, you wouldn't see that that many de details. Also, it's not done for a close-up of a bird, Man. for sure. They, like, I just remember them. They, It just looked perfect. It just looked, oh, these are birds. These aren't 3D birds. These are just birds. Um, mm -hmm. That's crazy. All right, that's really cool the way you transformed it there. Um, wow. Yeah. Maybe I can show you a little progression of the renderings uh, where yeah. I started. In, this was a, a, a early test where you can see the cloth was totally different from the settings. It looks more like it's underwater, yeah. uh, but I, I generally got the vibe, uh, the lighting, the mood that was important at this step. And also did some cloth shading tests with translucency and stuff like that. Then I also had a red uh, variant where the main character had a red cloak for even more readability, but I, I dismissed that idea because I wanted to get back to the to the more monochromatic look. Mm. Um, this was a more oversaturated rated style, basically. And you see, I, I, I guess I changed the cloth setting and the simulations 20 times, reinforced mm. and uh, exported the Alembic file again and changed the, the wind and turbulence settings, exported again, yeah. Okay. And basically, that's the way um, my pure beauty render looked. It's uh, interesting to see um, that Robin had quite a different approach because I'm usually tending to do most of the part in 3D and get to the to the desired look the, the closest I could tweak it in Blender and only do minor compositing, I would say. Yeah. Um, because this is the, the, the pure beauty render out of Blender and basically that is the the final so shot good. with the effect layers and some color correction and, and some grading in da vinci it has some some effects like like a slight vignette and a slight chromatic aberration film grain and stuff like that but it's generally not totally different from the from the uh, uh, beauty render out of blender yes yeah um, I, but yeah. but i i think your the difference between the beauty out of render and the final is is huge even though it's super subtle it, it's, it's subtle but it's yeah yeah you're right it's it's huge i also think it it gives it a little more of a filmic look yeah yeah the lifted blacks and like the grain yeah. it gives it texture i also i also uh, rendered some some uh, effect passes here is one. Oh, that looks so cool for example <laughs> It's basically just a, a strong spotlight uh, lighting only the, the main character. The rest of the scene is ignored and only the indirect light coming from the, of the cloth of the main character is lighting the scene. And That's I so mixed cool. that in, in, the, in the compositing. I guess it's not that much visible. It's 20% opacity max, I guess. But it all adds up and uh, you get a, a, a nice effect at the end. Also another pass with some god rays that I slightly incorporated. What do you comp also as a, in? In the Da Vinci, uh, in Fusion, basically. It's not that uh, complicated, the setup. It's just... I need to learn how to use Fusion. That's that's on my list. Fusion and Marvelous. Fusion, yeah. That's beautiful. Fusion is oh. re really, really great. Yeah, super well, the, powerful. The, 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 the combination with uh, with Da Vinci is, is priceless. Truly, it's free. It's nuts. I mean, it's or two hundred, what, or three hundred bucks for like one time. Yeah. Amazing. Um. All right, I'm gonna ask these couple questions from chat, and then, um, I have one more question if we have time. So let's see. Knox wants to know what your PC specs are. What what graphics card are you using? <laughs> uh, I'm using a forty ninety. Okay. Yeah, a single yeah. forty ninety. Nice. Yeah, a single one. It's uh, sufficient at the moment. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
Let's see. Um, okay, story-wise, story-wise, and I am very curious myself. Kakos Lykos asks, um, what would the person in the white veil transform into when they fall? If the others have turned into bats, a white bat, a pigeon, what? I didn't think about that. Someone earlier said it would be a seagull. Maybe it's a seagull. Yeah, it's a like... A big white bird. Yeah, a maybe, big white bird uh, or something. Falcon. Yeah, it's a really cool story. It, it Amazing. Super unique. Um, let's see. Thanks. How did you achieve the volumetrics? Um, is it fake alpha clouds or... Um, Oh, it's basically uh, uh, done in Embergen. Um, basically, Embergen has a lot of powerful uh, uh, presets. Maybe my computer is fast enough that I can hop into Embergen. Um, basically, I, I mainly used um, a bunch of presets. Where is it? Where is it? Basically, it's just uh, mainly the waterfall is the waterfall uh, preset uh, adjusted. Mm. I guess with all the Blender scenes, uh, my, my computer doesn't want to to play it in real time. It's okay. Yeah, it's all right. You're entering the matrix as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Close it. Alt F4. Alt F4. Are you alive? What happened? Can I even hear you anymore? Can he can he hear me? Am I still on stream? <laughs> I, I don't know. Stream wise, we're good. Mm. Manuel, I don't know if I lost you or not. Ah, okay. I can't I hear you. I, I will get me. back into Discord and Here I am again. Hey, you're back. Are we still live? You're back. Amazing. Oh, it was it was one file too much. Yeah, yeah, dude. Careful, you can't just be opening Embergen when you have everything else open. It's dangerous work. We got about a minute left. Yeah. Um, let's see. I Any mean, other questions? Other questions from people. Um, I mean, I guess I'll ask you this: How how was this challenge for you? Did you have fun? Was it different than the last one? Like. Um, I think at the end of the day, how do you feel about everything? Uh, it was great to, to finally start over again. I, I was really uh, having a lot of fun in this one. Um, generally, it's exciting the first day when you when you try to get an idea what you're going for. And I'm talking to my wife and asking, hey, what, what about this idea? Is it cool? And that's the most interesting part for me. And after the clear, how, how much, how close you can get to your reference points. And, and and to achieve to be uh, uh, um, to be happy with it by yourself so yeah not just the, the internet and everyone else so you have to be happy with it so that's a big part of it absolutely to man. call it to call it finished in the end I would agree it's important to make art for yourself and not for others um, that, that that'll fulfill you I think the other way around is from the outside in yeah. and uh it's tough, really tough. But uh, man, thank you once again. Congratulations again, and uh, thanks, thanks for taking the time to share with us. That was a great breakdown. I, I learned a lot here. It's really cool to see your workflow, man. This is the best. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you, thank you. Yeah, man. See you All next right, time, gonna... hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're always welcome, man. Have a good one. Thanks, Manuel. Appreciate it. Bye. Catch you later. Peace. Who's this? Is this hey. Mish Mish? How's it going? Dude, what's up, man? It's going very, very well. Very well. We're uh, halfway through. Halfway through today. Um, this, it moves yeah, quick, I've man. I've watched uh, both of the, of the, of the artists. Uh, I've learned already so much. It's so interesting. Yeah, it's so good. So can you hear me okay? Sound check, everyone. Guys, we're all, yep. all solid in chat. Um, I, can, I can hear you all right. Cool, cool. So, do you prefer Mishmish or Alex? Or I mean, you, I know you're Mishmish on the server. Yeah, whichever. I mean, I I don't mind. Can be can be either. Cool, cool. Yeah. Whichever is, is easiest to pronounce, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, where are you from, Mishmish? Uh, from France. 
from France. Awesome. And you've been a part of the Discord server for a while. Like you've been crushing the weekly challenges for a long time. How how long have you been on the server itself? Would you say how many years? Uh, the server. I joined the server um, for Alpha Trilities. So what was that? Twenty twenty one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's been a, a batch for years. Something like that. Cool. Awesome, man. Amazing. And this is what your third, fourth challenge? What? Uh, let me let me count actually. Uh, so there's been uh, Alpha Trinities. I've uh, submitted in uh, the the rolling ball one. Uh, dynamic machines. Dynamic machines, right? Dynamic machines. Um, boss fight. I, I started working on it, but I did not submit. Um, uh, uh, moving meditation. And this, and, yeah, I, I did that one. Um, Infinite Journeys, I did, I think. So this is your fifth one. So that's my number five, right? Number five. Dang. Took five challenges, but you got it. You got third place, man. Uh, incredible. This is uh, unbelievable. Uh, I mean, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's really humbling. Absolutely, absolutely. You, you freaking crushed it. You earned it. This is what a beautiful scene. I love the lighting here. You have. 60 plus unique character animations with unique cloth sims your story is insane it's emotional it's deep um and dude the colors too it's just wow you you killed it you knocked it out of the park so uh, like i've started with all Thank of these so what um yeah absolutely what what is the idea how did you come up with this idea was it idea one or idea 20. That was idea one, basically. Um, what made you so, so sure? Uh, How did you know? That's a good question. <laughs> that's a very good question. Um, basically, the, the, the way I approach those projects and the way I like to dive into them is I um, I, I always start with the, the idea, basically, uh, the, the message in some way that I want to uh, to work on or to convey in the piece. And, um, and somehow, you know, the visuals, that, that's just my opinion, the, the visuals are only at the service of the story. Or, yeah. Uh, they're only here to, uh, to convey the substance. So uh, basically what I did is I, I started from the, uh, from the templates itself, which, uh, which is a good thing. And uh, to me, what, what struck me at first is the, basically the way the diagonal is being uh, reinforced by the twisted shape of the of the staircase and and that gave me i think a, a a good idea of what i wanted to to do so i'm gonna i'm going to explain myself um basically uh i tried to play with the concept of ascension on three levels the um, ascension of, say, what, say that again the, the concept of ascension yeah. which is you know the the title of the of the challenge i wanted to play with that on three levels from the template cool uh level one is basically just the the direction uh, that's given by the by the um, by the staircase that's pointing towards the, the diagonal. Mm -hmm. um, the second level of ascension is basically the motion on that direction, and that is given by the by the character that's walking up the stairs. Okay. And uh, then there's a third layer which I wanted to to add. It's almost like a, um like a call and an answer. Uh, the call is the character climbing up, and the answer is an additional layer of ascension that's basically on the sides. And it's this idea of, you know, a slow crawling, like rippling upwards movement that's sort of accompanying the, the characters up the stairs. And that translates basically to, uh, to, uh, to uh, 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 the, the, the crowd members uh, kneeling one after the other in the wake of the, of the climbing characters. I actually have a, um, a, uh, a work in progress I can show you where we see that. That's basically like the first block out which I made. And, and we have that idea of basically people you know, kneeling one after the other. And that's sort of the, the third layer of ascension. Um, so that's basically where I started from uh, in terms of like the, the concept, the directionality. Um, and also I think that helps you know, to frame the composition because it really guides the eyes toward the, the top of the staircase. And uh, I think it also helps to slow down entire shot and just make something a bit more ethereal in some way so that's more like for the composition of the of the piece 
but then um, more emotionally, what I wanted to portray is basically something quite slow and majestic, you know, almost with some sense of reverence, um, something almost dreamlike or almost afterlife, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to me, that idea of the crowd kneeling was basically one of the most genuine way to convey that idea, uh, one of the most natural ways. Um, and starting from this, basically, I thought the, the idea of a funeral procession would be uh, one very good way to, uh, to convey that idea and to include like the three, uh, the three levels, which I uh, mentioned. Whoa, um, okay. And- so you came up with the crowd kneeling in a wave first. And then yeah, the idea was really to have that movement. Yeah, and so you and then you ask yourself, what's like the the best way to to portray that idea uh, in terms of like assets, characters, whatever. And uh, yeah, to me, I think the the crowd uh, uh, sort of uh, sort of resonated with me. That's, That's insane. Awesome. So you felt confident in of uh, sixty people, <laughs> like. You uh, the, to... the, the 60 people that came actually a bit later because I didn't know exactly how many uh, I was gonna uh, have. Okay. And it's a bit of uh, playing around with the scene and just blocking out with those simple characters like you see here. And just figuring out, okay, do I need more like in the back, more towards the, the center, towards the front? Because you want that animation to be sort of readable, easily readable throughout the, the, the five seconds. And you want uh, to drag the eye in the right, uh, in the right part of the screen. So there's a bit of playing around, and but I think yeah, maybe about a week into it. I, I don't know. Like we're, this is February seven. That's uh, crazy. That's it's, five that's days. That's basically four the, days. the number of yeah. Um, but then it, it 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 feels fast at that point. But trust me, uh, the, the rest is another story because uh, <laughs> there's been a lot of procrastination uh, in the making of that scene. All right. So before we move on to all of that, which I'm excited to get into, how where are you getting these animated characters from? Like you're not hand animating these. Sure, I am. Uh, these are basically the base meshes are uh, made with uh, Cuban Gen, which uh, it's a plugin for for Blender. Uh, but then it's all about you know uh, animating everything. This is like a whole chapter in itself. It's uh, all right. It's moving so on. Time. Let's yeah. Let's. You got it planned out. You made you you also made a great breakdown as well. So, take me through the journey. Let's go. Sure. Uh, I, I'll try to uh, to include mostly things that I have not like covered extensively in my other breakdown, so that it's. Uh, oh no no no! no. I, I think I think you you have a plan. Let's keep moving for sure. I'll have questions, but yeah, assume people here hadn't seen your breakdown. I think that's a good way to. Sure. Play. Yeah. Um. So where can I? Oh, maybe I, I'll touch briefly on the references, because yes. I think that's an important part of also filming the scene. Um, so to me, it's important to like open up your mind and not just go 100% into references from digital arts or 3D stuff. Or So I, I kind of looked into like movies, uh, traditional paintings, sculptures, music as well. Um, and in terms of like traditional painting, I, I tried looking for references of large crowds, uh, large gatherings, um, ideas of mourning and death, reactions to death. Um, we have, um, but they are like the, the carnal attachments, the like the visual uh, reaction to uh, like a, a dead body or a dead, uh, yeah. dead person. Um, and more in terms of like the the uh, the aesthetics for the the whole environment, I was really drawn into. Uh, Thomas Cole's paintings, uh, especially his naturalist way to uh, to represent uh, nature and vegetation, and there's really a, a very powerful um, uh, aspect in his paintings where human lives feel so small in some way, and uh, the vegetation is just encompassing everything, it's just so powerful in comparison to it. And I think like that sort of aesthetics sort of drove me to. Uh, to to uh, to the way I made the background and the, the environment of the scene. Um, Amazing. And then you know from from those references, uh, uh, so we have the idea, we have the concept, and now we have to find the visual language to convey uh, the substance or like, the concept. And to me, um, that's the point where I pick up a pen and a piece of paper, basically, and I try to sketch out mm-hmm. the ideas I have. 
so those are like uh, uh, initial sketches for um, clothing for the, the priest dress for the queen. Uh, should find like good shapes for the meter on her head. Yeah. Um, here's one like for the for the scene. That's so cool. The, the whole composition. Um, and I mean, yeah, a reference uh, wise, there's also. Uh, I think it's extremely important to have them for your materials, for your textures, for your environment, clothes. So, uh, so to me, it was about you know that sort of all granite rocks, the stairs that are like worn out by time and by nature. Um, bit of Greek influence, and uh, of course, clothing. Uh, there's a lot of like ancient stuff, ancient clothing, uh, ancient Egypt. The way they, they wore their garments. Um, it really came through in your final render, man. That's crazy. It felt ancient and it felt like a painting. Nuts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I also have to mention, um, basically, when you try to uh, to find the intersection between uh, fantasy and realism in terms of clothing, the, the intersection is basically what uh, costume designers do on movie sets. And um, so there's this woman who's called uh, Trisha Bigard who worked on Star Wars and she basically made all those uh, those awesome um, costumes for Padme uh, in, the, in all the movies. And that was also you know, a great inspiration of how to layer all these garments together and make uh, those interesting uh, dresses and, 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 and clothes. Yeah. So when you're saying the difference between fantasy and, and history, like you said, you go back and you look at the historical reference and then you tweak it a little bit. Well, I try to always ground myself in what works in real time, in real life because that's what makes everything believable, and yeah. that's also making sure that functionally your clothes are going to behave correctly when they are animated and stuff like that. Yes. But then you want to add, you know, that little touch of uh, of, uh, of like sprinkles on top, and usually you find those interesting ways because those people have basically solved that issue of joining the realism and the fantasy. So you kind of look at how they actually did it, and uh, it's always super interesting to see how they managed to uh, to come up with those beautiful designs. And, That's awesome. And garments. All right, so you have your reference, and it's clear that you spent a lot of time building this reference and getting this reference. What what do you do from here? Where do you go? Uh, so let's see. Uh, jump back into the. Uh, uh, progression thing. Uh, from there, basically, I'm trying to uh, to uh, to build the set, uh, and by the set, I mean those staircase elements, uh, the columns, the little blocks on which uh, everybody is uh, yeah. is resting. Um, let's see. That's that's the blender scene. Hopefully, yeah, yeah it works. Um, this is basically the the first like part of the crowd, but with the a bit of the stones uh, below. And basically, I'm trying to uh, to sculpt them, try to find again like the interesting shapes that will work uh, with the scene. Um, let's see. I think you can see better in that file, right? Oh, cool. Yeah. Wait. So you sculpted all these stones by hand? Yeah. Um, basically, I try to to find some brushes, you know, uh, from textures of rocks and. And again, you know, coming back to the uh, to the references, there's many like, like uh, scales of details in those. I think it's super important to have them. So you have like the larger shapes, you have maybe some uh, finer, you know, holes uh, all over the, the stone. So that's what I'm trying to uh, to mimic basically in the sculpts. Um, yes. Okay. What are you painting? And, this uh, in? Uh, ZBrush or Blender? The sculpt itself? No, that's Blender. It's inside of them. Cool. Uh, so yeah, it's about just, you know, uh, dressing up the set, making everything a bit pretty, I guess. And um, I mean, yeah, and of course, right after that, the, the animations uh, themselves are a huge part of the, of the work because uh, there's a lot of timing to be, to be precisely uh, um, made. There's a of course, the clothes simulations. There's, uh, there's 
a lot to uh, to, uh, to take in here. And also, uh, I was mentioning uh, procrastination. That's February 27. By that time, I, I still don't have any like close motion for the crowd. I don't have. I, I'm oh. missing so much of the like vegetation. It's because uh, the uh, deadline was March third. March uh, what, third or three or four. Yeah. I think it was like in the morning of the fourth for me. Yeah, because you're in France. Uh, the fourth, yeah. Uh, this is basically, yeah, me just the, the the day before rendering, just like uh, sort of batch simulating all those clothes in Marvel's designer and getting back into Blender and throwing a render and then keep working on additional closes at the same time. <laughs> it was like the, the day before or two days before. Yeah. But it, I, this is not something I will recommend. It's just. Uh, uh, the way it was. Uh, so you're saying time management was difficult. You were crunched in the end, and you had to force your your way through. So like, hmm. yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, what would you what would you do differently, having known that that's uh, the case? Like, so um, you know, yeah. So time management is a huge struggle for me. Uh, yeah. Me the too. reason being, uh, I uh, I have ADHD, and one of the main symptoms of it is what we call time blindness. So for those who do not. Can I say that again? Like your your mic is term. kind of uh, cutting in and out. I don't know if you can come a little closer oh. to your microphone, but can you sure. mention that again? Can you hear me better now? Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, saying uh, time blindness, which is basically the inability to perceive time correctly mm. and to uh, to like feel deadlines and conceptualize time correctly, and uh, that leads to like huge issues in my life. Or, like, procrastination and everything. So basically how that translates for me in my projects is um, I always end up rushing things in the last minute um, and I've come to accept it basically. And the way I work now is I try to to work on all the, the little elements of the render as soon as I can um, in the project, all those elements that require time. And I will try to uh, to leave all the stuff that can be done sort of quickly in some way for the last minute, because I know that the rush is going to exist. Like the, the actual rush, it is going to exist. And uh, it, it's just about trying to, uh, to um, I guess, play my cards uh, at different like days during the project. Whoa, okay. Sort of like the way I'm trying to, to work on it. That's crazy. So you leaned into it. So for me, I, I definitely struggle with the same thing, time management, and I always like kind of push things to the end, procrastinate, and then kind of crunch crunch it in the end. And uh, I don't like I don't like that. I hate doing that. And I'm like trying to avoid getting in that position by just being smarter with my time. So you are tackling it from the opposite you know you're like that's gonna happen and you spend all the time on the stuff that'll really hold you up in the end in the beginning and then you leave the stuff that you can do pretty quickly the stuff that you've already learned you don't have to learn relearn stuff like you can do it in your spare time um or not spare time but you can do it in your sleep rather um you save that for the end when you know the crunch is real, but you can get it out. So that's really interesting. Um, which yeah. again, why I love these it, it, streams is everyone it, has a different approach. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I, I guess one way to, to worry it is basically I, if the challenge is one month, I'm going to spend one month preparing for the rush, if, if that makes sense, like for the, the, the last five, six days, because as much as I'm going to prepare myself and try to follow a schedule and everything. It's, I know it's not going to work. It's just not going to happen. So, uh, yeah, so I have to like accept it for sure. For sure. That's, that's smart. You are working with yourself <laughs> in a different way than I would think, you know, yeah. uh, that's so cool. So again, I gotta go back to the, to this question. How did you animate all these sure. characters? Uh, so that's uh, basically hand uh, animated. Uh, hand animated? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I mean, you know, hand animation is definitely not an easy task. But uh, I think if you break it down into some uh, small elements, it becomes a lot more um, achievable. And the way I like to work on for uh, characters animation is, I'd say the number one tip is 
act the, the movement yourself. Like get up on your chair, go outside, and try to mimic the animation you're trying to make. And okay. Have a, a, a very uh, strong feeling for the balance and the way you are positioning yourself. Um, you know, uh, try to feel like the gravity in some way. Uh, during the movement, if you unclench your muscle, are going to fall down, and in which direction are you going to fall down? Um, a good way to think about it is I have this little uh, animation over here. Basically, the this you could call that the green zone. Basically, the, the the zone on the ground that's between all your joints are resting on the ground. That's your green zone, and your center of gravity needs to remain over that area for it to remain balanced. Mm -hmm. And the second your uh, center of gravity goes outside of that area, you are going to lose your balance. Like that very specific tipping point, that's where you fall down. So keeping in mind those little like principles, that really helps you to to to. Um, I would say to look for the right things to feel while, while you act in a mission. And you can sort of like think of, uh, okay, where's uh, the position of my pelvis compared to my foot at that spot, at that, at that uh, moment. Um, and when you have those principles in mind uh, and you go back to the, to the animation, I think um, it's because you might always uh, want to ask yourself, okay, what do I start animating with? Do I start with the uh, I don't know, with the, the pelvis, with the, the feet, with the, what would I start with? And my answer would be, imagine that you have a jar and you want to fill that jar with rocks, sands, pebbles, stuff like that. Um, if you want to fill everything into the jar, you need to start with the big rocks and then the smaller rocks and then the pebbles and finally the sand. And when it, finally you put on the sand in the jar, it's going to find its way you know, naturally inside the jar. And that's basically how I approach animation that way. Uh, mm. So you start with like the big things, the structuring poses and the, the key joints in some way. So I like to animate with IK, which means that basically you will only uh, move one specific, uh, like the, the end of the chain. And can, everything can you will, say, like, f find it's, uh, can you say that again? It's a little hard to hear you. It feels like your mic is like cutting oh, you sorry. off when you speak a little quieter. So the closer you can sorry, get. Sorry, sorry. The better. I'll person. try to remain next next to the next to the mic, um, so, um, or just speak a little louder too, if that's possible. But you were sure. saying um, you 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 were using a technique. You said a chain or a cascade or something. What did you say? So basically, I was uh, mentioning the fact that I like to animate with IK, which uh, is inverse kinematics. And for those who don't know what that is, that means basically you're just animating the end of a chain and all the bones that are before that end will uh, find their position naturally. So, like this, and, right? Exactly. And then you don't need to animate like the your shoulder and your arm and everything. It's just, yeah. uh, just like the end point. And the good thing about this is that you can uh, sort of uh, go back to what I said about finding the balance and trying to understand like the big um, like the poses and what's important in your animation. Because I can start with basically the pelvis and the feet. Because that gives me uh, in terms of like the animation, the balance, the center of gravity, where the character is leaning towards and everything. And only then, when that is uh, done uh, and you're satisfied with it, you can move on to uh, the shoulders, uh, the limbs, the head. And when that is done, then you can move into uh, the hands, the feet, uh, the heels, the fingers, like the smaller details. So it's really about uh, trying to uh, find a good hierarchy of uh, key joints in your body and and try to animate them in the right order. That's great. Uh, it's insane that you did that 60 times. Like, is anyone duplicated or no? No, no, it's it's literally uh, all uh, different animations. The, the I mean, it's it, it might feel a bit uh, insane, and it is insane. <laughs> I, I agree, but uh, it's also, well, first, it's fun, I think. I, I find that fun. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I would still have done it anyways. But uh, also, you know, it's all about uh, giving that sense of life, you know, detail, giving as much as you can into the into the characters. You want them to be sort of unique and react in their own way to what's happening in the scene. So yeah. I think it's a very important part of the Unity test. So, Mishmish, Mish, we have four minutes left. Um, do you want to touch on lighting, perhaps, or cloth? Maybe a little both? Uh, 
Sure, I can, uh, maybe I can talk a bit about clothes. So uh, let's see. So that's Marvel's designer, basically. I've done all those clothes inside that software. Um, what I really like about it is it's very uh, hands-on. Uh, I sort of like uh, building things from like the bottom up and yeah. you actually have to sew your garments in Marvel's designer. So this is fantastic to, to get something quite unique. And of course, I'm not like a professional sewer uh, or however that's called. So Seamst um, seamstress, I, I don't know. Or, <laughs> or, yeah, uh, I have a very good reference for that. Uh, that's this blog, which is called uh, Medieval Woman. Oh. Also, is Medieval Woman. They they have like what? those patterns, and, and they explain like how to actually make dresses for medieval props and, and garments and dresses. Dude, and you even so have cool. like the final result. So you can actually like find some little techniques like okay so they're adding this triangle between like both sides and so you're thinking okay so maybe i'll try to do that as well so uh here we go little triangle here and so on and so forth and basically you're just trying to to add you know layers on top of layers and and just make everything sort of as realistic as possible and it just sims it in real time or is it like it takes time to sim it i mean real time is uh Maybe not real time, but it's sure. it's relatively fast. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I have like I have a good computer, uh, so it's maybe like uh, I'd say two or three minutes of simulation for like one character. Oh, okay, that's so not bad. It's, it, yeah, it's fine. It, it's a bit long, but I mean, it's fine. And then, so then you did this sixty times for all those characters. Yeah, 60, that sounds like. Times. How is it? I, I, I'm saying it and I'm hearing you say yes, but it's like, I don't believe you. That's insane. What? Dude, how many hours well, did yeah. you spend on this altogether, do you think? Um, uh, it's hard to say because uh, I wasn't doing that full time. So uh, it sort of spread out into the months. Um, yeah. For like sure, man. Total, maybe, I don't know, like 100 hours. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, we have like two minutes. I don't know if you want to touch on lighting here because I love your lighting. Um, oh, thank you. Um, it's it looks like a painting. It really does. Uh, uh, lighting. What can I say except uh, except all the basic stuff that can be said? I mean, I'm I'm, I'm very very bad at lighting. I, I try to make good lighting, but I'm still learning a lot in that aspect. I think one one of the tips I have used to um, to to help uh, sell the sort of dreamlike effect is having basically two sun lamps in the scene instead of just one. So uh, two what? Two sun lamps. Sun? Like sunlight? Yeah. Yeah, like sun lamps. Okay. Like two of them instead yeah. of uh, just one. Okay, that's uh, I have basically ones that's basically sharper and that will give you the very uh, like the most of the energy of the light. Oh. And the other one is a bit wider, a bit softer. It's also a bit uh, warmer in terms of color temperature. And oh. it's uh it's helping uh, to uh, to uh, to uh, basically to to add a bit of glow in the fridges of the of the shadows. That's cool. I'll try to uh, to show that on the uh, yeah yeah yeah. Work of progress. I've never heard of that one before. That's that's interesting. Like like the way the way it adds a bit of like a, it's almost like a diffraction for. Uh, from film, you know, like sort of film animation, but it's basically baked into the lighting itself. It's not in the render. So cool. That's amazing. So uh, we yeah. we're out of time, but your info is in the description below. Um, I honestly forget if it's your YouTube or your Instagram or Art Station. It was just the link you provided for the artist. Um, you know, when you filled out when you submitted your file. So, regardless. Get there, guys. Go check out Mish Mish's um, breakdown. It's on your YouTube channel, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. If you guys, if you guys want more, go check that out. Um, but Alex, thank you so much, man. That was insane. I think we could have easily talked for another like 15 minutes for sure. Uh, but <laughs> wow, congratulations! And uh, yeah, man, keep it up. You killed it. Thank After you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it was a pleasure. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'll see you around, yeah? All right. Sounds see you good. on the server. Thank you. All right, man. Peace. Bye bye. Oh, it's under.
Yeah, it's What's me. What's up, Under? Unmute on Discord if uh, you are. Mute it on Discord. Mm. So oh, we can not hear okay. you. Yeah, what's up? What's up? Yeah, I'm good. And you? Doing well, man. Um, learning new stuff with every artist that comes up on here. And yeah, me too. <laughs> it's crazy, huh, man? Everyone's got their own approach and like killing it. Uh, very, very inspiring. Yeah, absolutely. So, dude, congrats on second place. Absolutely insane. Thank the, you. The idea here is like unlike anything I've seen in this challenge. Um, Thanks. Yeah, it, it truly is the idea that that shines um, so well for me, man. Absolutely incredible. So, um, wh where are you from? Tell the audience where you're from a little bit. Like, when did you get into 3D? Why did you get into 3D? Yes, yes, of course. Um, my name is Fred. I'm 36 years old and I live in La Rochelle, a French city of the Atlantic coast. Um, sounds beautiful. I've been, yeah, near the ocean. Perfect. Um, I've been a 3D artist for 12 years, mainly for architecture visualization. Okay. Uh, yeah. Very nice. Before diving into 3D art, uh, I had a few years of classical art background. I have always had a, a passion for images and creation. But uh, above all, I'm a geek at heart. I have two older brothers, so I was exposed to video games at a very young age. <laughs> yeah, all right. What kind so... of games? What was your first console? Oh, my first games were on Mega Drive, so Sega games have a, an important place for me, like uh, Street of Rage, or oh, so good. Kid, Cam Kid Chameleon too, and and I think all all the other one, Metroid on Game Boy or or GameCube, uh, Zelda Wind Waker for the style too. I yeah. mean, every year I have a the best game um, yeah and um, i think it was curiosity that pushed me to 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 learn how how all these things are are done in 3d so yeah i quickly fell in love with lighting rendering and compositing and uh, yeah, composition and lighting are my main tools every day for architecture. So mm. it was the, the start. Amazing, amazing. So in this challenge, you, um, how, how much of this challenge was you playing toward your strengths of composition and lighting and learning new stuff? Um learning new stuff on this one not really uh, i play i played with my strength uh, i don't have many times to achieve it though so i'm i spend a lot of time uh, conceptualizing and brainstorming uh, in general even okay. even even when i think i found the right idea I visualize as much as possible before even touching my 3D software. Um, I try to know exactly where I'm going. I need to have everything figured out in my head to validate the concept. Uh, of course, I I might come up with new ID during uh, production. Yes. But um, I don't have many versions to get the, the final result. You know. Okay, so you approach it very, uh, very directly, and before you start, you you know where you're going. That's cool. I like that. Um, yeah, in this specific case for Eternal Ascent, I didn't do any 3D during the first week. Uh, after the the announcement, I spent several days thinking about it anytime, without any specific moments. The, the goal is to have a lot of ideas running through my mind all the time. Very, 
you know, ideas come when you least expect them. I I prefer a day full of crazy ideas than two hours in front of a blank page that that put pressure on me. At least that how it's work for me. Yeah. So when you have a day of crazy ideas, are you just sitting there and staring off into the sky, or are you writing them down on a piece of paper with a pen, or what? Yeah, I I write I write a lot. Um, some some Pinterest too, some art station everywhere. Just uh, seeing stairs randomly while while out. Um, everywhere I just pick some reference and uh, I let uh, I let the brainstorm. You know. You let it wash over you. You dive in. You let it do its work. The the subconscious take over. Yeah, yeah. The I have. Um, I my first feeling was that I wanted uh, an indoor scent. You know, an interior. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, nah, I I took. I thought this choice would be more surprising, more original among all the submissions. But uh, I don't have the specific ID uh, for the first week. Um, I can show you my my first ID. Yeah, I think. Sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. It was it was decisive in my final choice. So we are in the end of the first week, and I have in mind um, a very theatrical scene with uh, an idea of a, a ritual. Uh, yep. Sorry. Um, a ritual of or a sacrifice where. Um, Inspired by Lord of the Rings of any medieval fantasy world. Yes. Yeah. Um, so like the character the... is kind of like walking up to be sacrificed or? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe sacrifice, maybe it's a priest yeah. at this moment. I don't know, but the, the yellow sticks are a huge crowd uh, watching, watching him. I see. Okay. Uh, so what made you it, decide to move on? Like, why why was this not working for you? Um, it could it could work. Um, this idea of an of an upper level was uh, was cool, but the stairs take up more than half of the composition. Um, mm. It could be very beautiful. I see the the potential. Uh, I like the the incoming light. But it's too contemplative. Um, I want more impact, something more alive, like dead people. <laughs> but at this moment, uh, yeah, something more Im impactful. OK, all right, got you. So it was smart of you to switch ideas because um, yeah, I yeah, I want is... I want more space for my story. The, the stairs needs, needs to to disappear. It's funny. It's it's yeah. like yeah. the template yeah. cannot while... contain you. You have to <laughs> yeah. further. I love while, it. Uh, while while uh, I repeat every ten minutes or so to read the FAQ and follow the main rules, I have the very dangerous idea of removing the stairs. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And but it worked. Uh... Like because because you, cause you yeah. kept it in the end. The stairs are still there, but it's the underworld. Yeah. It's it's insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's uh, at that. Yeah, sorry. Well, I, I was gonna say like, how did you come up with this underworld idea? Was it something you saw in a picture? Was it a random I, thing? Like... No, um, a lot of reference, but um, I'm I really deleted delete the the stairs physically on my on my scene. Yeah. Okay. And, Just think outside um, the box. Yeah, I uh, I start to think about uh, a second world, uh, a kind of second dimension, 
Uh, I don't know how I'm going to make it visually, but uh, I have this desire to place the stairs in uh, other place. Um, I think of something halfway between fantasy and science fiction. Not like the, the Marvel multiverse, for example, but something closer to, to magic, to uh, unexplained. Yes. And from there, I searched through my references and I found quite a few ideas for my childhood, more teenage than childhood, but I like uh, a genre called uh, urban fantasy. It's uh, when the story takes place in the urban, urban universe and suddenly forgotten supernatural creatures reappear in the civilized world. And uh, some visual example of this still style is um, like uh, Underworld, the movies. Yeah. Um, Hellboy or uh, Constantine. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, uh, what is it? Um, Pan's Labyrinth, maybe? Or even... Co what? Pan's Labyrinth, maybe? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Or uh, the Gremlins, even older yeah. ones. But, sure. Uh, uh, on the book side, the most famous one will obviously be Lovecraft, uh, sometimes Stephen King, uh, Charles Dolint, it's a guy of Urban. Um, and I like the concept of specific places on Earth that are used as uh, portals, path between two worlds, and, uh, and where a little magic goes. Uh, the invasion of evil, you know, like um, uh, Buffy. I don't know if you know Buffy. I never the, watched the vampire, it. Yeah, the but vampire I'm... slayer. I think it's the name in English. Yes. Uh, obviously, a fan of this one at the time. Uh, it's a good example of urban fantasy. Uh, also, Ghostbuster. Why yeah. Not? Uh, in a slightly more science fiction, paranormal style. Uh, a show called Fringe. Fringe. Yeah, um, I I'm a big Fringe. fan of this of this style. I love it. Um, I think it's grounded. Yeah. And it's a great way for yeah. like crazy stuff to happen it, to us. Yeah, some some episode of X Files as well. Sure. Um, Fringe. Uh, each episode begins with a, an anomaly created by a collision between two universes. So it, it's exactly the the reference uh, I had uh, I had in mind. Um, cool. From there, so, I didn't yeah. do yeah. Tell no, me. yeah, keep going. Yeah, I didn't do any 3D work the following week, um, and when I tell you that I brainstorm a lot of a lot at any time, uh, any time of the day, uh, I literally dream of this necromancer and this army crossing from one world to another. So I decide that will be my subject. Oh, man. Uh, now it's just about writing the story and apply to, to the template. I was just the, the necromancer vision. That's crazy. Wow. So, you were thinking uh, about it so much that you dreamed it. That's yeah, that's yeah, rare. Literally. Um, I'm I'm putting some work in progress. It's spoil a little what I'm going to say, but it's always nice. It's always nice to have something to look at. So uh, so the story, um, necromancy, I think we all have the same code to, to raise the dead. The necromancer needs fresh crops. So basically, my starting story is that someone or something has started a, a ritual. Um, it's placed in town to make sure to, to attract uh, curious people, but uh, still in an isolated and closed place to keep some relative discretion and trap the, the first guys. Um, from there, a spell absorbs the life energy of the police officer, who are instantly transformed into walking dead in the service of the necromancer. That's crazy. 
So the the idea of uh, an underground world under the world uh, under a bridge is directly the, the consequence of my first ID uh, where I wanted to keep the, the feeling of level and steps that will lead the main character closer and closer to his goal uh, here the city and then the invasion maybe invasion but uh, mm. of course technically I can do a ground destruction simulation to bring out uh, an army of zombies uh, in, in a few days so I'm looking for magic solution and um, as, as you may have seen with the, the prompt of your weekly challenge this week the, the mirror is often in people's mind um, a path between the world so in the same way I decide to use water and more spe specifically street pedals uh, for, for the crossing of my creature. Um, the also allows me to bring back the stairs from beginning to end and so to respect the challenge rules. Uh, it's, it's present but no longer take up the, the entire the entire composition. Mm. So at this moment, I am very enthusiastic and excited about this discovery. And it was only then that I said to myself, OK, I'm going to sub submit something. Oh, man, um, that's crazy. What? So like, what is this week two or week three? Yeah, and end of week two. Yeah. Uh, Timing is running out. Uh, I have to create environment and lighting, and I have two weeks. So, and a baby. <laughs> so a literal baby. <laughs> yeah, six months old. So wow. Two weeks, little weeks. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, that's crazy. Um, all right. So what do you do from here? Where do you go? Um, lighting, lighting and, uh, and color, um, you have already seen with the, the few work in progress here, but, uh, I work on the lights at the same time as I create the world, uh, the street and the, this choice of location, uh, give me this slightly, slightly dark and foggy atmosphere. Uh, being under um, a narrow one-way bridge introduce the the idea of trap mm -hmm. um, the trap in the in yeah the trap uh, in the in the first uh, part this is reinforced by uh, warm backlighting uh, it no longer seems to be reachable by people block, blocked by cars and and the darkness so I choose this light for, for that. Um, uh, I can show you the, the import, very important things. It's a change of color on the, the middle. So the change of color helps with, oh, okay. With uh, story comprehension. Uh, but also as a technical trick for many reasons. Um, first, the temperature uh, drops in area affected by a, a necromancer. So it, se it seems logical to switch from warm and lively, lively light to something cold and hopeless, you know. Naturally, yeah, absolutely. And here, um, blue makes people feel uncomfortable. Uh, for some, it's the color of mourning or sadness, uh, isolation, or being trapped. Um, they are in a world in which they cannot escape what is hunting them. Uh, it symbolizes 
night time but uh, anxiety and cold fear too mm. and the most important for me is the, the switch uh, the switch between warm and cold uh, I choose to place this change in the middle of the five seconds the five seconds animation to, to keep the, the perfect balance between uh, life and death and the transition the transition sorry take only a few frames to maintain a, a fast pace and to emphasize uh, the fact that there is no hope of seeing the trap coming or of escaping from this situation and for the viewer, the surprise effect is more impactful, of course. And technically, these four or five frames of complete black in the background allow me to, to hide the animation transition of uh, all the characters. You oh, know? that's smart. Um, yeah, there are two animations for each character. And when everything turns black, the first animation are replaced by death animation. Yes. So, so this change in light from warm to cold feeds my story, um, intensifies the, the impact of the action, the, the action, and allows me to save hours of animation and <laughs> adjustment that I, I don't have. So. Uh, the switch is, is very important, the, the tempo of this switch. It's very striking too in the final where it's like, it's really creepy. Yeah. Um, it's really creepy, legit. Uh, it, uh, so I think it worked out. Yeah, yeah. So you are you have the, the yellow, the blue, and of course the, the green. So the choice of green color is really logical too. I mean, in in horror movies, green symbolizes symbolize suffocation, witchcraft, mm -hmm. um, the natural turned unnatural, uh, disease of immortality. Um, it represents death too. So, I think it would have worked with uh, purple, maybe. But I choose green for its complementarity with other colors and easier, easier readability. The, yeah, green is the right the, choice. It's, it's a great. Yeah, the, yeah, it's come from below, illuminates the, the cracks on the ground, which is the entry point of the living dead. And everything is a balance uh, between above and below. And this green light that springs out is the visual impact that marks the, the precise moment where the living collapse and the dead rise. So a very powerful color here. So yeah. how do you, we have um, about six minutes left. I wanna to touch oh. on the floor falling in and you know, you added some characters, you added some skeletons coming in. Um, but let's touch on the floor falling in and then maybe the last thoughts, final thoughts. How does that sound? Yeah, I think there is no, not much to say about this. It just, uh, I think the the whole, whole thing is about uh, the tempo. I mean, the, the tempo of the lights, the tempo of all the animation uh, I think what holds everything together and makes it work without being a mess is the rhythm the the animation is is not perfect the the simulation is janky but uh, I was keen on making the the six second very rhythmic and I had practically only one possible render given the, the time left because I have, I think, 48 hours of render time. So True. no room yeah. for, for error. 
and the the cracks on the ground is uh, is part of the the render. There is only one render, and um, well, okay. Did you do any, did I, you do any post processing afterwards or? Oh, uh, not. Mm, wait, whoops. Maybe I can show you, but uh, no, not really. I I haven't really taken the time to show you the post production part, but that's crazy. Um, <laughs> honestly like my way of producing i choose to do as much as possible directly directly in 3d yes and uh, i use davinci uh, just for color grading but all the the effects and lights are already in the rendering uh, i have render passes of course but it's really just in case and no need to go back over everything so I don't know if you can watch in in YouTube, but uh, it's just a, a color grading, and all the effects are are here in the render. That's awesome, directly. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, just to get uh, about the like I said, the the tempo. Um, for example, uh, I can show you with the render. Up. So in the in the first frame, for example, yep, you we have this ritual ritual or sacrifice space. It goes very quickly. We can't understand all the detail, but the, the placement of the candles introduced the shape of the stairs. The, this helps guide the spectator and at the same time respect the rules because I don't have stairs at the beginning. Then the, the character appears, the, the stairs too. And this leads naturally to the rest of the scene. All of this happens in one second. And after that, the character raises his hand and initiate the, the seconds of event. I mean, the spell lights the fires and starts the cracking. And the cracking of the road, which goes in both directions, forward and backward, leading to the collapse of people and the ascent of the dead. And it's already the end of the animation. So That's each crazy. time the, the animation is played, the viewer can follow a different path. Yeah, you loop it a couple times, yeah? Yep, but the... okay. Yeah, so the viewer can follow different paths, which does not prevent understanding, but offer a new reading. And like the the necromancer, who will always come back to take lives, it's endless. Uh, it's my my eternal ascent, in fact. That's incredible, dude. But, but wow. VLC don't work. <laughs> I'm I'm blown away. You killed it. Um, I'm 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 super proud of you, and I I think your approach, and even the way you described it all in these thirty minutes, is really unique. Yeah, I I try. <laughs> it's really interesting, and uh, like man, uh, next time there we, go. we do these challenges, I gotta come back and watch all these because. Uh, It'll get me out of my own head. I think that's that's really helpful. Um, you focused really on the story and in the beginning and the idea. And uh, yeah. if it wasn't for your first idea, it wouldn't have given you the idea for your second idea. Yeah, which, exactly. Which, which is awesome. And you literally dreamed this. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's the, the, so necromancer, cool. the necromancer parts. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's so cool, man. Um, yeah, that's um, very, um, very unique. Okay. Anything else you want to say here before we uh, move on to Luigi, our final artist here? Uh, no, uh, I, uh, I have just uh, a mood reference just for the color, just to finish. Uh, with uh, some movie, uh, The Exorcist, uh, Ghostbuster 2, and um, some, some evil guy. Mm -hmm. Very, very... It's necromancer for me. This guy, it's a, it's a necromancer. This guy too, and um, and then and Saruman too, and they are always highlighted with green and blue. And uh, this yeah. was my refer reference to green, blue very is fun. saturated color. I love it. Very powerful. Yeah, I love it. Thank you so much, Under. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for thanks, taking the thanks time to you. and breaking this yeah, down for no us. Problem. It's special. Um, yeah, man. All right, I'll see you on the on the Discord side. But uh, yeah, congratulations, sure. and we'll see you soon. Thanks Have a lot. great one. Absolutely. See yeah. you. Peace out, man. Later. Yes. Hey Luigi. guys. Hey Clint. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up? All How good, are you doing? Man. All great. Great. Uh, super great and thankful to be here and a lot nervous, to be honest. <laughs> oh, dude, it's fine. It's fine. It's the end. And uh, I'm feeling good about all the stuff. Yeah. And, you know, we had some great artists on and uh, yeah. I'm excited to chat about your submission. Do you want to loop it for us just so we can kind of see see what we're talking uh, about? Sure. Here? Yeah, um, that's, that's, that's a loop. And um, yeah, I'm super, super excited to be here. Like I was saying, a dream come true. <laughs> that's sick man um so I, it, your your animation can you maybe click the screen or something it's not looping for me or does okay. uh Sotomonte, i think is handling it oh okay yeah on the case yeah if this was our one technical difficulty then that's a big win <laughs> um so okay no problem <laughs> soto's gonna work on that um yes tell me man uh you said that you have been following um, my YouTube channel for a long time. Is that right? Like way back? Yes, way, way back, man. Uh, I think the first video I saw you was uh, Who's Gone Is It Anyway with 3DW like 12 years ago, maybe? Probably. Yeah, that's that's probably about right. 12 years, yeah. Yeah, it's it's been a long journey. And um, I think I started all of this thanks, thanks to 3DW and Corridor Digital. So I've been, you know, like mo most people is like, oh, I'm inspired by Star Wars or I'm inspired by, you know, those crazy, uh, like huge budget films. Yeah. like talking to you <laughs> it's just i feel like i'm dreaming <laughs> that's awesome dude that's freaking awesome that's so yeah. cool that it, like it connects from way back i, I love that yeah i love that and and it's yeah. insane dude you won first place with this it, it's crazy i think this submission to me i i feel so much with this and it's so deep um and like i can see like i you know even though this kid is doing this yeah the biggest you know, decision he's ever made like i feel like i you know and 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 we as the viewers relate with the kid like i don't see mm -hmm. the i don't see the kid as the bad guy in this situation i see like the people really? fighting in his town as the bad guy like yeah that that that's a really interesting thing because like you can that the perspective can really change i believe on on the life of people um, because uh, I, I will explain this on the presentation, 
but it's really inspired on what's happening really uh, right now on my country. And there's a lot of background in, in how I got to this idea because I didn't have this one right away, which it was a process. I think this was like my fifth or sixth idea. Yeah, okay, so, okay. So let's yeah. start there. Mm -hmm. What, um, uh, should I jump where are you from to the first off? Okay, should I jump to the presentation or? Well, no, let's just chat a little bit. Let's chat a little bit. So, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, where, I'm where from, are you from Ecuador. Okay, okay, you're from Ecuador. Yeah. And how long have you been exactly. doing 3D? Yeah. Uh, it's hard to say because um, I would say at the same time I discovered you, you, your channel, like you guys' channel, I started, you know, learning everything I could uh, from, you know, filming, editing, uh, all the all the tricks, basically. And uh, since, well, I didn't have like a really good computer, uh, my, you know, skills were a little bit limited. Mm -hmm. And the place where I was like technology isn't that of a thing. So it was, it was a long time until I can say that I really uh, focus on, on 3D or start working a little bit more in 3D. Because like I said, I was like going in through a lot of uh, subjects like filming, editing and, and all of that. Yes. So I could say that I started like 12, 13 years ago, but I started to taking it a little bit more serious from 2021, actually with your, your first, no, your second contest, the yeah. alternate realities challenge. So that was a huge challenge for me because I was just discovering Blender and um, I had like two or three months and I just wanted to, you know, uh, get be part of the challenge and to challenge myself, of course, you know. So, yeah, I could say those are kind of the times that I've been doing 3D. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. OK. Thanks. All right. So Thanks, let's get man. into it. Let's get into it, man. So, OK, where, where do you start? How do you like the challenge hits on February 3rd? What are your first thoughts? Where, where does your mind go? Yeah, should I put it, the presentation? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, all right. So what I did basically was uh, I prepared like like five steps. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I don't consider consider myself like a too technical uh, guy, more like a artistic and, and all of that. I do want to change that because I think it's quite necessary sometimes. But um, at this time, I really wanted uh, to analyze things before uh, starting the 3D part, because, you know, when you start modeling and doing all of that, and you want to do some changes. It's like really hard to change everything. Yeah. So, no, I, I want to take a different approach on this one and like uh, trying to have a, the right mindset, you know, to participate. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I just created uh, the idea, like my self analysis, where I will be seeing the strengths and weaknesses, learn from the past, and then the three part. So, yeah, let's jump, let's jump right into the idea. Okay, so I have an amazing drawings right here <laughs> where I was sketching um, the first um, ideas that came to my mind. Wow. I was uh, coming out of a huge project, actually. So I was very stressed the first week that you announced this um, contest. So the only thing that I could think of the first week was just in my mind, you know, just just ideas because I didn't want to touch a computer. I was super stressed um, yeah, and I, I just... It. Yeah, I just wanted to relax, you know, uh, because when, when you're so stressed and you start thinking or forcing yourself to to do something like it doesn't, you know, quite end up well. So the, the first idea that I have was like this crazy apocalyptic world when you see some towers in the background, uh, really amazing parallax effect. And you see like some spaceships, you know, go into space and some another, uh, you know, aircraft like trying to. Um, uh, shooting them and, and, and in the front you see like a robot trying to save a uh, human robot some, some sort of a thing kind of like the movie the creator I don't know if you watch it no I hadn't seen it but yeah I get it oh. it sounds like a pretty like you know sci-fi yeah movie like scene. yeah exactly but I mean I would I I knew myself like I don't have the time for this I don't think I can learn uh, Embergen in three weeks <laughs> or yeah. do all the crazy simulations. So no, out of the way. So no, next one. This one is like, I wanted to do like a uh, floating city, you know, and again, I don't know why, why I had uh, the towers in mind, but they have like a big, big flames on top, like that resembles the, the fuel or engine of the city. So they are flying. 
and kind of having like a steampunk um like a, like a steampunk flying city uh like the game bioshock infinite i don't know if, if you ever yeah. played yeah exactly so in the front you will see sort of a sort of like an electrician where he has like a flame in his back and basically he's going to the top and you know change the the flames and, and use that um use that thing i think it's like a blacksmith blower you know to to make the the flames bigger and he has like a like a small robot companion like a steampunk style and i i really like this idea at first but I, I felt like it, it lack of like motivation, but I think I started with this one doing um, uh, with some references, you know, with my journey. And I really, really like uh, this one, which is kind of like mix of an electrician with an astronaut. And I just started looking for more references, for example, like uh, the Bioshock Infinite ones. And I love it, you know, with that flying CD concept, but yeah. with those towers and, and flames. I, th I, I thought like it was going to look cool, but, and especially this one, which I think it's uh, really nice that a small robot, you know, like a companion that helps the electrician, you know, whatever he needs. So at this point, I was like, okay, I will start. Um, at this point, I started modeling. I think it was almost at the end of the first week. I started uh, modeling the the base of the very basic shapes of the you know the city, but um, I didn't really thought that this steampunk style was going to be unique, you know, because a lot of people like it, and uh, right. I was, yeah, I mean it's really cool. Don't get me wrong, but it, it's it's a lot. It's very common. Okay, so yes. I wanted to look for something different. So. I started thinking, okay, what could be different but keeping the flying city? So I was like, okay, what if instead of like this style, I add like uh, some sort of a poor uh, city, but like, like a contrast, you know, it's a poor city, but on the sky, it's kind of crazy to see that, you know, like how can they afford that technology <laughs> if they're on the sky or something? So this is where I started, you know, with the first um, um, concept that I had in mind on the left. And <laughs> that blue ball represents the this small you know robot companion mm. and I, I was i was um having a lot of trouble to this because i had to you know model all this stuff uh like like the base of the city i didn't really um uh like it so much i i added some bdvs clouds but they take so long to render yeah and i was like oh man like i i just really don't want to get frustrated or stressed with this project i wanted to have fun learn mm -hmm. And uh, I just like, okay, just let's kill the, the flying city ideas. Let's try to go with something like uh, realism. But I like the, the for example, the, the style of these uh, houses, which is very inspired in the favelas of Brazil. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is where the story, like the idea it's coming to, to reality. Uh, once I have this one, I, I, Okay, so this is a little bit older, but I, I said I said to myself like, okay, what's typical on, on Brazil or not just Brazil, but South America and it's football, soccer. Yeah. Everybody plays soccer in here and it's impressive. Uh, so yeah, what better thing to put a kid uh, there to play football and will be very interested to, to have something on his head, like he's you know balancing it. And uh, this could be very unique. I don't think this could be a repetitive idea. And most of most of all, I love it. I like it. But it's still, like, was was really simple. You know, like there is not a purpose for the kid. So it was just going to be a kid climb the stairs and oh, it looks cool. But I really wanted to give it a purpose. Yeah, the story. So this is What's the exactly, story? exactly. So this is the part where where it's getting very close to the end idea. And I started adding like this bad guys. Like, you know, there are sort of gang members with guns and the radio and the kids just going there, but didn't make much sense. Why would you go there if they're, you know, it's kind of dangerous or why is it here? Is it here? So then I change it to something very similar to what Mitch and Mitch had, like a lot of people celebrating like it's a competition and the kid was going to have like a number on his chest, a number on his back and you know it's like a worldwide thing where you know you have to go to the top of the stairs with a with a ball on your head and uh, i love that idea i think it was going to be amazing 
and um, I, I started, I, I think about there, I started doing uh, the modeling of the basic, you know, all this, um, how do you call this stuff right here that's on the, on the, on the edge like of the stairs. Guardrail? Yeah, 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 like that, exactly, yeah, but like the railing and all of that, but then again, like, I, I put a stop to it and I was thinking, okay, am I really going to do this? Because there's a lot of people, I have to do a lot of cloud simulation, many expressions, they have to look different because, you know, the, the weather there is very hot. So they all usually just are with shorts and shirts and, and they don't, you know, they don't have these big clothes and they, the, the expressions need to look very real or, 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 or good. And I'm not that good with that. Yeah. So. So honestly, at this point, I was like, like a little bit depressed because I couldn't find an idea that I was really uh, happy with or identified um, with. So this is the part where uh, I think I was like two two days off approximately. Like, oh man, I don't know what to do. And I was starting looking for just references, just, you know, just to refresh my brain. And then I look, uh, I found this on Sketchfab. I don't know if it was, if it, if it was Destiny or something, but... I found this amazing uh, bag from, from this artist and um, I immediately saw this emotional connection where I saw this, okay, this looks like a bomb and um, this definitely looks like a bomb and this could be a very interesting idea uh, for, for the kid, you know, because now he has a purpose. But more than that, this reminds me of the situation that my country is it's living right now because Ecuador is it's at war basically with uh, with terrorism. They call him terrorism to these drug dealers and people has been suffering a lot. And wow. I immediately saw this emotional connection. So it was, I don't want to say happy, but I was really excited. I found an idea that it reminds me some something of my life and uh, and it's telling a story, you know, because of course uh, he's, he's basically it's just, I mean, he's going to blow and yeah and we and we've and i know this may sound a little bit uh, of an impact to people outside but it's really sad to 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 how the country has get to a point where this is just normal you know like this is just another tuesday in, in here and people are afraid to go out uh it's it's just horrible to be honest oh we are God. trying to change yeah, we're trying to change that. And, 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 and that on that date, I think it was 9 of January, uh, the new government just uh, sent the whole uh, military on the streets, you know, capture uh, a lot of people. It was chaos, man. Like it was whole chaos. So wow. this backpack reminds me of all of that. <laughs> thanks. Thanks to this, um, um, to this asset. And I immediately, you know, uh, I knew the I knew that this was going to be the idea that I wanted to do because I, I like it. I love it. And and it really uh, reminds me of this uh, situation in our lives. OK, so that's, that's this great. is how I, I, I think um, that's I would say, you know, um, as a writer, it's tough to, you know, you want to do all the crazy fantasy stuff you want to do these big ideas yeah. but then it's like you know write write what you know that's going to be the thing that that everyone connects with um it's going to be a very personal story but because we are all we all share a lot of deep feelings and thoughts and emotions that it's going to connect with so many people and uh i think that's what you found here with this with this fourth idea which yes is crazy um yes Yes. And also I wanted to keep, you know, the, the, the Brazil style one, one, because, you know, a lot of people know, uh, more Brazil than, than Ecuador. I mean, most people don't even know Ecuador exists, <laughs> but, um, I, I, I love this, you know, this style of, of the graffitis and the walls, the colors and, and, yeah. and all of that. So, so I kept it. We do have something very similar here in Ecuador, but it's not that famous uh, as that part. So I just, I just kept that. Okay. okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I, oh yeah. So I was uh, looking for some uh, references, you know, um, you know, how the houses are on, on the mountains, the mm -hmm. graffitis, the, the lighting and, and all of that, how I want it. And, you know, you, you see the railings <laughs> right here to go totally. a lot of inspiration from, from that. Also like the, 
there, I, I've seen, I've never been in Brazil, but I've seen some videos where they do like go down the stairs with a, with a bike. So, so I, cool. I thought like it was, I, love that. <laughs> I thought like it was, I know it's just a small detail that somebody just, I don't know, got hurt here. Oh, and, no way. And, That's fun. I love that. Okay. And the wheel. <laughs> yeah. And, um, the, the military, or I would say this is like a special forces police. It was really, uh, an inspiration from a movie called, uh, Tropa de Elite, where that movie is basically, uh, documenting the life of these special forces that they go inside the favelas and they try to, you know, fight crime and it's, it's amazing. So that's why I put the colors of the uniforms like that. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Because at, th at first I just, you know, I was, I was looking for a reason because this time I, I was really, really, uh, answering the, the question, you know, why is it there? Okay. Self analysis. Yeah. It's important. Yes. So th this part right here is like, I need to, to do, uh, to study myself or, or to think about the things I can do and, 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 and won't take me much time. And I think this is something that I heard from your video, you know, to take advantage of your strengths, not your weaknesses, you know, just try to, to handle that part. Mm -hmm. And that really got in my head, man. Like, thank you so much for saying it because, okay, for this time, I really want to know like, what am I good at and what am I not so good at? So I believe that my strengths could be the, compos the, comp the compositing, lighting, telling a story that I think I love it uh, or that I had was good and the modeling because I, I could modeling uh, any stuff like if I can find an asset, for example. My weaknesses, I would say, are um, the animation and simulation. I haven't really had the time to like dig into it or, or, or yeah, because most of my job is, is being commercials and, and when something like this huge stuff happens, like we just hire people. So I've never really, and since I was a compositor, like I never really felt the need to, to, to focus on that. Okay. So once I know that, okay, I know that I had the story, um, and I know that I'm good compositing, so I won't waste time, uh, doing some crazy animations or simulations because I really wanted to learn Ember Jam for this one, yeah. but I didn't, didn't really have the time. Okay. So. This point I think to myself was really important because uh, I had to learn from my mistakes from the past and I took like the knowledge of each one of the previous contests that I did. And I would say I took a lot from the first one, the alternate realities, which was the one that I got to the top hundred because, you know, I really love the lighting composition. I learned a lot about retargeting amateur to, just to change the character. I model uh, some stuff or a lot of stuff. And that one right there, I had the emotional connection because that one actually, it's a memory. I, I travel uh, to that place because it does exist. It's a huge mountain that in the bottom, there's like a lake and it's really on top. That's cool. uh, it's really high. And I travel there with my girlfriend. So I thought like it was an amazing uh, memory to share. So I felt emotionally connected to that one. But I was lacking a little bit of a story because it was just like a guy, you know, <laughs> doing like... Uh, going to the mountain and I didn't use many assets and didn't really ask feedback to my friends. So it's just like, did it? And okay. And the movie meditations, I said, I was, I, then I started learning uh, marvelous designer, but I just touched it for that project. So I, I completely forget it at this point. Um, yeah, that I like happens. lighting. That tends to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's tricky. <laughs> It's so tricky. But for example, the problem that I did there was that I 3D model like almost everything, only the character and, and the clothes uh, I didn't. But, but the whole set, I just was watching YouTube videos of the of the environment and like doing screenshots and more. And it took me like three weeks to model that. So yeah, no, I won't make that mistake again. The Endless Engine, I learned a lot about car rigs, texturing, but I did the same mistake that uh, there's lack of story and uh, I didn't, I, I, I used a lot of assets there, <laughs> quite the contrary. And I didn't feel that emotional connection. And the boss fight, it was just, oh, I started learning about EXR files. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. And it's, man, it's just amazing to work uh, uh, like that. You have a lot more control in that way. But okay. Uh, and yes. One thing that I really love about the, the, the first one is that I did something that I love and the three next, I was doing something that I thought that you guys were going to like mm -hmm. or love, 
So I think that was a huge mistake. And no, I, I didn't want to repeat that again. So I really took a lot of inspiration from my first uh, part particip participation. So my conclusion was before starting the, the 3D and, and, and composition was just to tell a good story uh, that I felt emotionally connected, focus on the lighting and compositing. Don't waste too much time modeling and do something I like and don't stress about it. So it's very exactly. similar to how Under approached it. He set out, he took the first week to figure out his, what his idea is. He thought about his strengths and he had a very clear path as to where he was going. And it seems like you're, you're doing the same, same. same. Yeah, because, yeah, because like it took me a lot of time to get to the idea, but honestly, once I had it, like I didn't have any doubt, you know, it was just going for it. That's I know cool. what to Execute, do. Yeah. Exactly. It was it was pretty easy. I, I think I, I have to admit that I procrastinate <laughs> too. And also like uh, depression is something that I believe some some as an artist, uh, we, we suffer from that. But I think I think it's part of being an artist because we are emotional and we work based on our emotions. And sometimes if I don't feel good or bad, like, I mean, I can spend 10 hours doing something that if I'm feeling good, happy or do an exercise can do in two or three, you know? So there are some times that I just take two days off and then I go back with more ideas and, and more, uh, more, uh, more excitement to That's keep good. working. Important. Very mm -hmm. important. Yeah. So let's, let's jump to the, to the treaty part. Um, okay. So, uh, the assets I use for Sketchfab, CG Trader, Kitbash, and I do some modeling myself, very few modeling. And these are some of the assets that I use, you know, the shoes. Actually, that guy is the character. I just, you know, change it uh, uh, to the skin color, retarget, um, and the football on his head, the guns, the, the that's the TNT. I don't know how to say that, the, well, the bomb yeah. and the drones. Yeah, so I just modify them a little bit just to, to match, you know, the style that I wanted if they needed to be modified. Um, and then uh, the, the police force, which is uh, an asset for CG Trader that I used some time ago. And actually the captain, <laughs> it's my cousin <laughs> that yeah, I 3D scan. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. He has helped me with a lot of videos my whole life. That's He's fun. been my main actor. And uh, I had his 3D scan and I don't know, I thought he looked cool with that beard and all that. So I put it perfect. As a, as, yeah, as a, as a captain of the Bope police. Oh, yeah. So this is part uh, with Marvelous Designer. I'm not that pro using it. Uh, I was literally just watching tutorials again. And first one, I, I, I had bought this one a long time ago, like this uniform. I think it's from the Lakers. Yeah. And uh, I, I struggle a little bit with it because I wanted to delete the top, the tank top. I mean, the top part but the the pants were just falling you know because it's, it's a whole piece connected so i didn't know what to do so my I, I didn't want to stress so what i did is just basically put the shirt on top of everything and okay. that worked yeah that, that really okay. worked mm -hmm. i just solved the problem and then just move on i didn't want to stress too much about it that's good man yeah that's smart mm -hmm. for this part really didn't take me that long uh I just really 3D model some basic, you know, uh, solid there. And what I can say that I did learn about this project was to properly do displacement maps on Blender, <laughs> which nice. I had struggled a lot. Yeah, because I used to add so many subdivisions, but I, I knew from Maya that this, I come from Maya from a long time ago and, and also 3D Max, but a long, long time ago that is not possible. I mean, displacement map is supposed like you don't need to have that many subdivisions. Uh, but in Blender, there's an, there's a, there's an awesome uh, tool that you can just activate it and boom, amazing displacement map. Do you models. know what it's called? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a modifier called uh, subdivision, the subdivision modifier, but you need to have active the, active the cycles, experimental, and then you can active. I can show you it later once we jump into Blender. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So this one was quite simple. I just, you know, don't waste too much time on things that won't be seen. For example, the back of the mountain. I just wanted to see what the camera sees. I don't, I, I didn't care about the rest. And since my composition was uh, mainly the front, 
I just uh, um, I was going to cover basically the whole the whole rights of the of the video. So yeah. Okay. So let's jump to textures. I use a lot of Blender Kit, which is an amazing um, add-on for Blender, where you can uh, download materials that are for free for to your to your to your scene, and it's really cool. Really, really nice. It saves you a lot of time. Yeah, it saves you a lot of time. And I use Midjourney to generate some textures. Um, let me just show you, for example, for this posters. Oh, nice. Yeah, I just put, you know, Brazil festival posters and I just do some variations of it. Oh, I sweet. some flip some. Yeah, they look really cool. And I love the colors, you know, like carnivals, festivals, football, soccer, all of that. I created this one, which is the graffitis, with uh, another tool called Focus, which is kind of similar to, to Stable Diffusion, but I believe it's way simple, way simple. Okay, nice. <laughs> Stable Diffusion, yes. And it's very uh, easy to use, and I think it allows me to have more control over things than Midjourney. And I, I love the, the, the realism that it gave me. So I use it for uh, textures for the stairs and uh, that wall. Mm -hmm. because Sweet. they look okay, awesome. really cool. That's smart. Mm -hmm. Yes. For this part, which is like way, way in the back, like honestly, I, if it wasn't for me, I just wanted to have like a gradient uh, because for me, the whole focus was on the kit. I didn't want anything to distract uh, the viewer. And I look for a lot of uh, references of Sky. And again, like I used focus just to mix those images. And at the end, I, ha I ended up with this result uh, yeah. right on the top left. And, you know, it's basically just if, if it is too short, you know, I can expand it, put it in Photoshop, just, you know, fix some issues and, and all of that. Yeah. And well, the lighting, I had some options, which I went with the option number three, because uh, I love how how the 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 I did the lighting on my first um, participation, which was alternate realities. I love, I just love that, man. The <laughs> I just lit, love like that. like golden hour? Not, not much like a golden hour, but I just love that the sun is on the top right. And it kind of gives like a, this silhouette to the police and like to everything, you know, it's like yeah. shaping also the, 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 it gives a lot of volume to the scene. And I love it. And I love also that it's like, you know, tracing like a path to the kid, you know, it's yeah. like illuminating. Uh, so I, I love it. I just I just went straight with his options because the other ones I felt like they were a little bit flat, and I liked this one at first, but it was a little bit confusing with all these shadows of Raylene. So yeah, no, no. no, you you made the right choice. Yeah, thanks, man. Thank you so much. Okay, all right, let's go with the compositing. Well, this part right here, honestly, I don't know if I did it unintentionally or my brain, my subconscious, or something, but. It turns out that the most of the colors that I use on the composition were were from the the, the, the <laughs> from the Brazil flag. <laughs> I don't know if it is from the references. I, I you know I look for so many references, but I ended up using you know the yellow, that's green, awesome. and, and the blue. So that's why maybe it looks really peaceful and and you know it catches your your attention. And for passes, I didn't use that many passes, only these three, the ambient occlusion, the mist, and the cryptomate, which <laughs> I think I discovered cryptomate last year. And I don't know how could I have been living this far without cryptomate. It's That's amazing. Awesome. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so here I have like a little bit of the whole process of how it was. Then I, I can just show it a little bit more slow. Yeah, ah, beautiful. Real important there, the last last little touch-ups, yes. man. Thanks, man. And well, this is just one phrase that I told, I've been told, telling myself, like for me, the perfect work is the work that I finish because sometimes I've been doing some, you know, challenges that I overwhelm so much mm. that I just can't finish them on time. And, you know, I kept that feeling and it's not good. Because I always think like, I always thought that, okay, this is not perfect. I'm not going to send this, but no, in the end, do something quite simple that you can do on time and feel happy about it, you know, and, and try to, to become better for the next one. And yeah, for me, the perfect work is the word finish, the one that you send. 
I love it. I'm writing it down right now. I need that for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's, 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 yeah, it helps me. And, you know, it's like I can move on. <laughs> it's like, okay, I finish it. I like it. I can move on to the next one. So I don't feel frustrated from, from not finishing it. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I like that. Thanks, Glenn. So, uh, is there still time to show 3D or <laughs> are we finished? Um, so yeah, you're the last one. Um, I would say if you have any final things that you want to share, then, um, yeah, let, let's hop in a little bit, uh, and see, and then I'll, uh, I'll close it out with the chat and just hang out with you guys for a little bit before we call it. But yeah, let's take a look at your scene. Okay. Or maybe I can show you these, you know, like the steps we were watching before. Maybe a little bit, you know, just a little bit of blocking the stairs, <laughs> the bicycle, uh, the railings, uh, some plants, you know, uh, this one right here, I just wanted to fracture a little bit the stairs. That's cool. And then it was just modeling, sculpting it, you know, like uh, getting it closer to the to the actual stairs. And basically uh, this mountain or, or, or ground, I just sculpted a little bit so it's up the stairs. And it gives that sensation that, you know, there's dirt. <laughs> I had that pole and that radio first, but, you know, they didn't uh, do anything to the story. So I, I think I just took them out. Okay, nice. Um, I was talking. Oh, yeah, this one was the first <laughs> uh, clothes that I had for the kid. I, I didn't have the bomb right there. Uh, I have the the police, you know, with the, with the basic texture, that simple uh, texture. Then I change it to to the blue uh, police enforcement. I think. Oh yeah, here I added the the textures on substance, the drones, a lot more details like you know trash. Some here, you know, over here, over there. Yeah, this is the the, the first part that I was doing, like the flying cities, and uh, yeah. Then I was just adding a lot of trees and then just the front. Um, I would say that I really focused this time on the front. I put a lot of time working on the front. The stairs, most you mean the foreground? So, yeah, sorry, the foreground. Yeah. yeah. And this for me is like a personal touch, to be honest. Uh, I used a mist pass in, in here with a with a mask. Yeah. Just to just to brighten those things to the to the to the sky. And I even just matching a little bit of the colors and i do just like a huge or intense uh light wrap that i love i just this may be my personal touch but i love it yeah it blends and, in nicely. Uh, <laughs> yes uh yeah a little bit of color correction of this part of the dirt with the crypto mat uh yes with the crypto mat yes of course and uh yeah just highlight the areas that i want the, the viewer to to watch you know because here you might get lost a little bit, might get lost, but in here, uh, yeah, it's 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 bright that part, you know. So it really calls your your attention. Yeah. Again, huge bright, huge uh, light wrap. Oh, this part is very interesting. Um, let me see if I can, I can I can show it in After Effects because um, there's a plugin in After Effects where you can basically create like uh, a smoke in 3D. And I just explore the camera in a null in that same position. So I can um, just control it without problems at all. So you added like fog in a sense, but it was like, yes, and it was animated and tracked yeah, let me, with your let me camera. Just... Yeah. Okay. So I think I missed foreground. Can you guys see? Yeah. Yeah. So you see, basically, Oh, sorry, it's a little bit slow, but it's like this. And I just do a huge mask because I only wanted this part. Yeah. But with a mist pass, it's really amazing because it creates that depth. And uh, you see, here's the, the camera. So the, 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 the smoke is like volumetric. That's awesome. And since since we have the same uh, camera movement and, and, and the position is exactly on the foreground, uh, I don't have to do this in Ember Gen or anything. I just have full control here and after. 
<laughs> that's awesome. What's the plugin? Do you know? The... Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, this one is called, uh, I think it's Boris. Boris Effect Particle okay. Emitter. Cool. Yes, it's from, from Boris. Yeah, really cool. And, and, it, and it has feathers and you can even import your own sprites because I think it uses uh, those sprites. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this is just a uh, started color correction on the Vinci. Nice. And a little bit of sharpen. And yeah, just uh, putting a lot of like a vignette in the lower part. And then that's just like the mist pass. Amazing. <laughs> that's it. Dude, so good, man. So good. What what a freaking awesome breakdown and approach. And you walked us through everything, like your the mental state all the way through and yeah, how you got through it and the, the thinking and the process behind it all, man. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Um, oh, thank you, man. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you for Sotomonte doing an amazing job with the live stream. Thank you to all the artists. It's, it's an amazing thing, really, to be here. I couldn't That's believe awesome. it. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's, it's crazy, it. man. It's crazy that, and I'll be seeing you in uh, in Colorado for Camp Mogra. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, sure. It's gonna be sick, dude. It's gonna be so much fun. Oh my god, camp is the best. Uh, camp Mogra. Uh, tickets go on sale. I think for four twenty this uh, this month. Oh, four four twenty. Okay. Yeah. Um, you're good. You already got your ticket. But for everyone else who uh, wants to come on down. It's a great time. It's like literally the best 3D meetup ever. We all just basically hang out for five days in nature and go on walks and hikes and <laughs> play, you know, play games and do chats. I'm going to be teaching photogrammetry. Um, oh, time. nice. Yeah. Nice. So, That's so cool. I wanted to learn that. Yeah. So it's going to be it's going to be cool, man. Um, I, think, I think it's really important for, for us because we're so much time working behind the screen that uh, we think we are sort of immortals and we really don't take care of our bodies or in, in our minds. And really happened to me, for example, in 2022, I fainted, like I passed out on a mall because I was too stressed, too much work. Uh, and Whoa. no, I just really wanted to, to change my life. So I would say that it's nice to to have that time off, you know, from computers or from from doing this, so you can get back and completely refresh with more ideas. Dude, it's I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more, and that's exactly what camp is. It's uh, it was kind of made <laughs> yeah. for that reason to to unplug. It's a no computers, no no phones kind of a thing. Yeah. Is encouraged. Um, obviously, you'll have your phone with you, but yeah, no computers. All the yeah. all the classes are taught like like for the photogrammetry thing I'll be doing. We're gonna do a scavenger hunt and oh nice. And stuff. So <laughs> yeah, so cool. Um, but man, so cool, thank man. you, thank you, Luigi, uh, for doing this. So we'll thank be in you. touch. You know, we'll we'll be chatting on Discord and stuff and having a good time. So thanks for joining and thanks for all like. Right. Dude, is what you, your fifth challenge as well, right? Yes, my fifth Congratulations. challenge. So don't give up, guys. Yeah. Don't give Very up, people. Important. You can do it. <laughs> Very important. All right, man. Thank yeah. you. I'm going to just go solo here with the audience and uh, we'll, okay. we'll chat a little bit and hang out before I call it. But uh, yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. See ya. Peace. Bye bye. See you, Luigi. Peace. Bye. All right, y'all. That was, shoot, that was amazing. That was amazing. I, I learned a whole bunch. That I always feel so inspired after all that. Um, I really should go back and watch all that stuff, like, before I dive into the art for the next challenge in August. It's just, God, there's so many great ways of doing things and you know, ways that I never would have really thought about. And it's, it's really cool to see all these artists, uh, different approaches to the same challenge. Um, they share a lot of similarities, but also we saw that there's a lot of differences and I hope that it inspired you guys. Um, I'll, I'm gonna hang out with you guys for the next, like, I don't know, 10 minutes. Oh, we also have to do the weekly challenge. Yes, we have to do the weekly challenge. Let me do that first <laughs> because um, I gotta get through two weekly challenges actually. Um, Cause it's been, it's been a busy week. I hadn't had time to, to judge the weekly challenge for last week. So we're going to do both 
uh, Mirror and Solar Punk. So here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do, guys. I'm gonna um, go to the washroom real quick. Uh, take a little break here. Let's call it a minute, two minutes, two minute break. I'll come back here. We'll say what's up. We'll hit the weekly challenge. Um, see where we're at time wise. But uh, yeah, Soto, um, I'll be back in two minutes. I'll see you guys in two minutes. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Weekly challenge here, uh, right when we're back. And I'll answer some questions that you guys have. I'll see you in a sec. Peace. What's up y'all what's up y'all all right we're gonna do the weekly challenge we got two we got solar punk and we got mirror and i think we're starting what are we starting with soto <laughs> we'll see yeah let's switch over let's do this all right i guess all right it'll be determined based off the first winner we'll see which challenge we're doing <laughs> all right hit it fava beans all right solar punk yes i love it this is a hilarious idea. Um, I think this is super fun. I love the way you did it. You got the light, super nice glow coming in through the windows. Uh, nice, uh, what do you call it? Um, when the light shines b behind the leaves. Subsurface scattering or yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Um, I love it. Yeah, I, I want to be buds with this little robot here. What would I do differently? I don't know. I think the only thing I would do differently is it's it's very Ian Hubert and it's there's so much Ian Hubert out there. Of course Ian Hubert is Ian Hubert, but he he inspires far and beyond. Um not that it's a bad thing, but I can tell that it's like an Ian Hubert type of thing. I that's the only note is that, you know, I I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the note quite is, um, but uh, yeah, you know, maybe maybe searching for that's actually a really difficult thing. I was I will say finding your own style is a really hard thing to do, um, and it takes a long, long time. So just be aware of it. Be aware of it. Um, you know, we all want to try and find our style. We want to we want to be able to show someone a piece of art and be like, oh, that's 
your style. That's the style that you know that you that you do. Like no one else does it like you. That's like the ultimate goal, right? Ian obviously had reached that. Um, he's been doing it for a long, long time. But that's my only note. Anyway, congratulations, Baba Beans, on winning the Solar Punk Weekly Challenge. Who else do we got? Folio, yes, Folio. I love this so much. This is the best. Um, super vibrant, super punchy. It really reads as Solar Punk to me. There was a lot of good honorable mentions that we'll get into here, um, but but this one truly did read as Solar Punk to me. You know, they're you know making it work. They got their I don't know acid uh, reader on the left. I don't know uh, chemical readouts. What whatever you call it. You got your um, solar flowers too which looks super cool i love the camera angle as well i just think this is great really really nice stuff what would i do different um i don't know maybe separate the foreground and background just a little bit perhaps um with the lighting just a touch but it's a nitpick for sure um i think your scene reads really nice Maybe the pot itself could have a little bit more differentiation in the texture, perhaps. Um, but I, I love what you're doing, man. Super good stuff. Next up, Solar Punk winner, we got Manishka. This is great. Again, I think it totally reads Solar Punk. It's this little robot bud watering his little flowers. I love it. It's beautiful. I want to be there, be hanging out with this little bud here. Um, now, I think this probably could be a one that could use a bit more contrast on like a, a vignette may may help this one just a little bit, in my opinion. Uh, personally, I'm, I'm a sucker for the vignettes. I know some of you guys, you know, maybe aren't a fan or don't use them in your art, but I would say it would help focus the image a little bit, help add a little bit of contrast to it, um, especially to the edges here. So maybe consider doing something like that. Maybe it's a little overexposed, a half a stop perhaps. Um, but those are those are my only little nitpicks. I think you did a great job, congrats. Uh, next up we have Naz. Ah, yes, yes. The Outpost, right? I guess it's the apocalypse, I guess. And, um, you know, you got some outpost here that set up this super sweet solar panel. I love your silhouettes. The characters on the left, the robot on the left, the character in the middle. Uh, I think you did a really good job with it. And um, I love this world. I love this vibe. I think it's really cool. Really great job. Great composition. Love the subtle color too. And finally, for the Solar Punk winner, we got Ray. This is fun, man. I love this. I love this. The kayaks down below made it for me. And the little birds flying there too is just super, super cool. I love these sweet like solar airplanes that you made. Um, and like you can see in the cockpit, there's room for I think like six people or something or five people. I love that. So these are pretty big, pretty big airplanes. Um, yeah, and the kayak are down, down there, so cool. And you got the motion lines coming off the wings. I love it, I love it. What would I do different on this? Um, I don't know. This 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 one works for me. Um, super nitpicky, but bottom right on the bottom to the right, just the hair. There's that little shadow spike, uh, just to the right of the center of the bottom. I'd probably get rid of that. It's a little hard to read what the birds are doing at the very top, just to the left of the middle. Um, so I'd either clean those up or remove them. And yeah, man, those kayaks. Great. It, it, the kayaks made it for me personally. All right. We got uh, some honorables to get into. Let's do it to it. First up, honorable. We got Wondrous. Freaking love it, man. Uh, love your composition. Everything about this is super sick. You came really, really close to winning. Um, to me, it was just missing the solar punk vibe to it. And, and, Again, it's like, okay, well, what is solar punk? And in my definition of solar punk, it was, you know, I chose I chose the winners because they rung the most true to me, I guess, for what I believed was solar punk. Um, 
So that would be my only note is just like kind of more aligning to uh, to the prompt, I would say. Uh, next up, we got Haunted Leg. I love this. I wanted to shout you out. I know that you're new on the server. Um, and so I, I did want to shout you out here on the stream and say welcome. And also, I love the concept that you that you did here. You made your own book cover. Um, uh, surviving in, you know, with solar survival of some sort, right? You, you wrote a whole little thing on the back. You, you made a cover and everything. I just think this is super fun. Um, what would I do different? I think the main thing is probably twofold. One is lighting. Um, I'm wondering if you could have a bit more of a contrasty type of light. Maybe a skylight is coming down on these or it's being lit from a window on the right side, perhaps. It feels a little like, you know, one HDRI. It's lit with just a single HDRI kind of vibe. Um, so I would push and pull the light, the highlights and shadows a bit more. Um, using area lights, of course, and you can use flags, which are black, non-reflective planes that block light, right? I literally have one right here. This block in the light that's coming from the outside. There's like a green light coming up against the side of my face with the flag. It blocks it, right? Um, so just a little something to push and pull the lighting. And we have the, the window here. Right, so literally this kind of setup, but in your scene could help punch it out, bring it out a little bit more. The second thing is just the cover of the book. I'm not quite sure what it is. I think it's a mushroom table thing. I don't know, but you literally had to make two things for this, uh, which I think is awesome that, that you did that. Just a little bit more clarity on what's happening in that book cover um, is, is the only note. Next up, we got Objitude. This is freaking sick. I love this. This one came really close to winning as well. Um, classic solar farm. They have these out in uh, on the way to Vegas, which is crazy to see it from the road, like kind of up there against the mountains. And it looks just like this. It's insane to see. And looking at your render, maybe want to pop in and position a bunch of different mirrors like that. That, that looks super fun. <laughs> it's super cool. Um, but yeah, great photorealism, <clears throat> what would I do different? I don't know, maybe a little bit more detail on the top part of the frame in the mountains, or maybe find like a higher angle so that, you know, like even at the beginning of Blade Runner 2049, when they're going over Fresno and it's like all of those fields of, you know, whatever those fields were full of, um, maybe a higher angle looking down at it like that, or just some different um different texture here more detailed texture in the actual ground for the mountains that that would be my only note good stuff uh orin cloud is another shout out here and um this render has it all for me like it, it has everything except the solar punk kind of vibe i thought this was underwater when i first saw it it was so foggy that i thought it was underwater um, and it kind of reads that way to me. So I get it. It's all subjective, right? In your mind, I'm sure it, this was solar punk to you. And for me, it was a little disconnected. Um, so that would be my only note. Uh, it was just clarity, I suppose. I think it did remind me of the underwater city from Star Wars a little bit. Um, Cause that fog is man, so thick, so thick. But that's your style. I love it. I think it's super cool. Um, but I uh, wanted to shout you out, of course. We got Romandy Machev next. I love this. This is a really well done take on a classic piece of art. Um, I don't know the name of the art, but uh, it comes to my mind. In my mind's eye, I see it. That farmer and his wife. Um, I think you did a great job recreating it. Or doing an interpretation, it's rather rather than a recreation. Uh, got our little little robo solar solar farmer, and I think the animals here are really well done. Your lighting is really well done. What would I do different? Um, 
I don't know, maybe crop the top of the image down a little bit. Is that a square crop? I don't know if that's an exact square crop. I would probably do an exact square crop on this. Um, bring a little off the top, I would say. Because there's a lot of headroom, but there's not much room on the ground. Um, so that those would be my two notes there. Otherwise, I think you're doing a good job. Um, and I think we're still on some honorables for Solar Punk. Yep. We got RTZ up next. This is super fun. Um, I love the colors. Love the aesthetic of this. Uh, super punchy. Really, really fun. Uh, feels like, I don't know. I just want to be here. I would love to be here. My only note for you is texture the antenna up there. And um, actually, I have a couple notes I like. <laughs> the clouds in the background are a little funky looking. Um, the ones on the left look more like white broccoli and the ones on the right just seem a little low res. So I would try and balance out your shape language um, or rather just the, 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 the sizing and the scale of your view. I'm getting cut off like right at the, the neck. You know, I'm like right at the bottom of frame like this. Like, hey guys, what's up? It's me, you know, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm getting a little bit of that vibe. So seeing some of the ground to gra to literally ground your subject is going to be helpful. All right. Um, next up we got Scouty. What up, Scouty? Doing a full on animation, taking it all the way. I love it. A lot of you guys will do an animation, but you'll just stop. You'll stop it right in the middle of your animation. I'm like, no, you gotta do the whole thing. You did the whole thing. You brought it up, you came to a to a rest, and it and you you uh, closed it out. I think it's perfect. One of my notes here is um, that city, the silhouette of that city is a little little hazy, um, or it's a little unclear rather. So I would probably lose that backpack mountain so that we can see the tip of that main tower hitting the um, the skyline, have it silhouetted against the sky, or just dropping those mountains a little bit in the background. So it um, just kind of cleans up the silhouette of that of that center building. That would be my note there. Um, but I think you did a freaking great job. Super cool, really good stuff. Uh, Vito King. This is a fun scene, man. I think you did. I think you did a good job. Fun little birds you got. Fun little city you built. Um, what would I do different here? I, I think maybe a little, little bit of detail in the foreground would help. Looking a little low poly, uh, and subtle texture-wise in the foreground. Um, I think it could use a little bit of that. Um, and the character could perhaps use a little bit of fog behind them or something to separate them from the background because the background's very busy and the character also has a lot of patterns going on with them so i'd probably do something behind them like a little bit of fog or some mist or something just to pop them out from the background that's what i would do there and then uh, we got visual shout outs man super cool um really unique clothing i love it what would I do different on this? Yeah, I don't know. Um, it feels like it's a little bright, maybe. I know you of all people don't want to hear that you should use a vignette, but maybe this one would benefit from a vignette or a natural vignette of sorts. Um, the, the green seems a little like oversaturated and blown out to me personally. Again, this is all subjective. Um, I think the canisters on the right could use a bit more detail and texture. Um, and, and probably a bigger, a bigger plant in her hand just to get it, just to read it right off the bat. Um, but I love those colors, man. Really, really dig the colors. Maybe a little bit more headroom as well for me personally. But yeah, I think that's it. Is that all of our honorables or do we have? Okay, cool. 
yeah. All right, so that's Solar Punk, y'all. Congrats to the winners, Faba, Folio, Manishka, Ray, and the other name that I'm forgetting, Nas. There you go. Congrats to you and the honorables as well. Um, let's get into this week's weekly challenge. That's gonna be Mirror. So let's take a look at these winners. First up, we got Bratik. This is intense, man. I love this. This is visceral. This is actually terrifying for me. Um, when I first got my car, I have, I have an FRS. When I first got my car, I went up into the mountains and I tried to, you know, I'm not racing like this, but, um, you know, I went probably faster than I should real late at night. And, uh, it's pretty terrifying. I did it for about a month of my life and I was like, never again. So this kind of puts me back in there and uh, yeah, it, this one scares me. This one, <laughs> this one scares me. Um, I love it. I think you did a great job. Maybe just a you can come down in your exposure in the background, just a touch. Um, but yeah, this is visceral. This one's mean. This one's scary. I think you did a really good job. Really good job. Uh, we got wondrous this time around killer work dude freaking killer work i love that you're doing the like very symmetrical kind of framing i hope you're not doing it just because i keep saying that i love it um but i do love it and uh i think it's wonderful i think your colors are fantastic as well you did a really good job with the mirror right all the troops coming through the mirror is super cool um this is actually probably probably one of my favorite pieces of art that you've done in the last couple months, man. Yeah, this is wonderful. Really, really nice. Maybe some bigger muzzle flashes? Different variation of muzzle flash, perhaps? Um, but man, am I a sucker for that reflective ground, that wet mud. You're doing a great job, man. Good stuff. Next up, we got KV3D. Real nice, real nice lighting, super cool subject matter. I just, I freaking love it. It's great. Super solid, nice skin texture, good hair. Yeah, that lighting man is on point, super cool. What would I do different on this? Um, hmm. Maybe something in the expression, I don't know. It's real tough to, to nail the expression. Feels a little, uh, I don't even know what the note would be. It's tough. Something in the chin or something, or the eye? Maybe it's the eyelid? Like the eyebrow is up, but the eyelid is not open. Yeah, that's a real tough one. Um, off the bat, that's what my gut says. I don't know what the actual note would be. Um, and then lastly, anything else I do different? Um, no, I like I like it a lot. I think it's super solid. Really cool idea. Very striking. Good work. Congratulations. Next up, we got Manishka. Back at it. The little vampire bite. I think this is a great idea. Um, great use of the prompt mirror, uh, really nice render quality, really nice lighting. Um, one thing that I would do different is the blood trickling down to me. That actually looks like, a, a headphone cable and it's shadow. So I don't know if there's a way to like differentiate those two lines of blood. Um, I think that would be, that would be helpful to do that. And then for the vampire in the foreground, I think perhaps you could, they feel a bit flat. The lighting on the vampire feels a bit flat and they feel a little bit bright, but I do understand that you need to kind of like bring that out a little bit because that is an element um, that is important to the story. I think if this was like, an animated uh, submission, then you can get away with it being a little bit darker, a little bit more subdued. Or if it's the hand, you know, doing something. Um, but yeah, those are my only two notes. Otherwise, super solid, man. Good stuff. And last up, 
we got Sun. What up, Sun? I love this. This feels like album art to me. This feels super unique. Um, I love it. I love your lighting. I love your composition. I love the idea. It feels very, very innocent and peaceful. I, I love that. Um, I would want to be in this moment. I think it's amazing. Yeah, really great idea. What, what would I do different? I don't know if I would do anything different other than potentially just cropping in a little bit more. I would crop in maybe a little bit more just to get uh, a better read on the kite in that mirror. That's the only thing I would do different. Um, other than that, I think he killed it. Really good stuff. And as usual, we got honorables. So let's let's highlight some honorable mentions here. Who do we got? Folio? Yeah. All right, man. I think you did a really good job here with the composition. Um, really nice natural vignette you have going on the top and bottom. And a pretty cool concept, right? You're shining the mirror up into the temple to maybe open a door or something. What would I do differently? I think just lighting. That's probably the only thing. Uh, it feels a bit, a bit ah, flat. I don't know if it was the right word. Hmm. It needs maybe more depth with some fog. Uh, the foreground is pretty dark. And then from there, it's just kind of like, there's fog there. There's the lifted blacks in the shadows, right? But that's it. It's just kind of flat. It feels a little flat to me. So I, I would probably work on the lighting a touch um, to bring this one step further. But that's that's the only thing I can really think of here. Uh, next up, we got Jabo Bo. This is super cool. Love the concept. Love the colors. Love what you're doing. Um, note wise, I try and get a bit more clarity on those characters in the foreground. So I don't know if you want to put them directly in line of that mirror or just scoot them a little over to the right and then add some more fog behind them to silhouette them. Cause you see how like the, the, the closest character in the bottom middle, you see their hand is silhouetted against the fog. You kind of want to do that, but with the rest of their, their bodies, um, that would be my only note. Um, I lied on the left. There's like a, character thing i don't know what that is it looks like a creepy crawly thing but it, it, it at first glance it looks like it's part of the sculpture that statue in the background so i would try and differentiate them from that statue it's the red lighting that i think blends them in like that um so maybe you don't use the red lighting on that character and you save it for just the statue in the back um, you know, or you push them off to the left a little bit more to give them their own space. And then finally you have this character on the right. It looks like they're, there's a giant sword through them. That's a bit strange. Um, and they're, they're very, uh, obscured by that fog. Like they're just pasted on top. I think the fog is a little too heavy on that far right there. So I'd probably back off a little bit on the fog and probably add some fog behind that statue to, again, really determine its shape. Who's next? We got KMZ. This is sick. I love it. Very simple, very straightforward. You knocked it out. Uh, beautiful. I, I don't really have any other notes. It's very simple. You're doing everything you need to do. The crop is perfect. The story is there. Um, it's very striking. Super fun. I, I love it. I think you did a great job. You have the color contrast going red and green. Um, and the subtler subdued colors in their respective portions of the frame. I think it killed it. Really good stuff. Next up, we got Scouty with a really, really nice one. Um, this was, you know, tied for for winning, in my opinion. We just had another one, and the other one spoke to me a little bit more. 
Um, and when I say other one, I mean a rear view mirror uh, submission or side view rather. But, but I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I love the fog, the color, the subject matter. I think you did a great job silhouetting that character. Super creepy. Reminds me of Silent Hill. All the good stuff, man. Keep it up. You're killing it. Enjoy that vacation too. Um... <laughs> Enjoy that vacation, man. I hope you're having a good time. We got Tom up next for honorable. This is, again, very simple. Really nice. I think this probably could be a nice little square. Probably a square crop. Um, you're not really getting much with what's going on, on the left side of the frame. Unless you do want to add a character there or a subject there. I think going with a square crop would 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 be nice. Um, again, this is all just my opinion. Super subjective. But uh, I love that color contrast you got going on. I think that's really cool. Really nice. Super simple idea. But you're doing it effectively. So good job. Vito King is our second from last. I think you did a knockout job with the lighting on this. This is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Really nice skin tones there. Um, really nice skin shader. It's like semi-reflective and kind of has a nice little sheen to it. The lighting is just real nice, real punchy. This is probably one where you could crop the top down um, there's not really anything going on up at the top there, so I'd bring that crop down just above the mirror. Um, yeah, and you're telling a little, nice little story, uh, with all of her different accessories down below. I think that's fun. And I'm wondering, I don't do a lot of, like, a jewelry ad type of lighting, but I would look at that. I know a very popular look is that kind of, like, direct sunlight kind of angle with a bounce card behind. Uh, I wish I could show you an example right off the top of my head, but I can see you kind of going for that. Um, I feel like the, the, the bottom though of the image is a bit flat. And to your credit, you are having the brightest and darkest points of the image um, as your subject with the phone, her hair, right? Uh, your eye is immediately drawn to that high contrast area. So the lack of contrast down below, it's not the worst thing, but um, it does feel a little bit flat down there. I'm wondering what can be done about that. Um, but yeah, man, good stuff. And then we got Y Riedel. Um, really cool. This is the buffest child I've ever seen. Um, jacked, just absolutely jacked. I'm ass assuming this is a child. I don't know. I, I guess it red as a child to me um but i love your composition beautiful composition you can clearly read in the mirrors all four versions of her um it feels like a faint distant memory i think that's really cool um is that it sodomonte that's all the honorables yeah sweet y'all that's it um congrats to the winners on mirror pratik wondrous kb3d manishka and sun all you guys get 15 points towards your uh, your your badge, towards your rank on the server. And uh, it's just like Pokemon, right? It's like the gym badges, but instead it's with art. So it's super cool. Oh, we're back. We looking back? I think we're back. Yeah, we back. What's up, y'all? Um, so... That's it. That closes out the uh, the weekly challenge. You guys want to get a challenge in yourself? We got it running on the Discord right now. Let's go check it out. But y'all, that's it. Um, unfortunately, I have no more time to spare. Uh, I have a 2:30 lunch and it's 2:20, so I got to run. Um, y'all have been amazing. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, for learning with me. I hope you guys took a lot away from this live stream. Um, yeah, that, that basically wraps out the Eternal Ascent 3D Community Challenge. The next one's going to be in August, and I'm going to have a handful of fun videos coming out in the meantime. So if you guys aren't subscribed, subscribe, right? Get notified. I'm going to have some fun stuff coming out. Um, I'm going to release a Unreal Engine Master Material, how to build a Master Material setup. The ultimate Master Material. It's going to be the ultimate Master Material, all right? Um, I'm going to be launching that video. Probably gonna do an art breakdown for my Eternal Ascent submission. 
um, and probably some photogrammetry videos coming up. Uh, I have a couple other ideas as well for some stuff. So yeah, subscribe if you ain't subscribed and uh, we'll be seeing you guys. We'll be seeing you soon. Thank you so much. I'll see you on the server. Y'all have a good one. Happy weekend. Peace out, y'all. Later. Thank you.